Yo, Atlas speaking, and welcome to a brand new series on the channel. And the fourth One Piece fanfiction on the channel so far. Synopsis What if I was reincarnated in the world of One Piece, trained and gained the ultimate devil fruit? Let the tale begin. Chapter 1 One Piece. Chapter 1 One Piece. A young man with a whitish blonde hair blinked repeatedly as he stared at the scenery around him. Wherever he looked, as far as he can see, it seems there is nothing but the vast waters of the sea. The dazzling sky-colored sea reflected in his eyes as he felt the indescribable freedom it offered. There was just one problem, though. Why the hell am I floating in the middle of nowhere? Lucas shouted in frustration. All right, Lucas, think. What was the last thing you remembered? He closed his eyes in a desperate move to recall the events that took place before this. I was at home, reading mangas as usual. I think there was an update in One Piece, but I don't remember reading it, ah. Lucas exclaimed as he started to remember. Right. I was about to start reading it then, uh, I can't remember. I think I fell unconscious. Wait, am I in a dream? Just as he was about to start panicking, suddenly, he felt something grab onto him and was pulled out of the waters. Eh? 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 As soon as he turned back to see what had grabbed him, he saw an overstretched arm actually latch onto him. What the hell is going on? Lucas screamed once more as he flew through the air with the arm attached to him and speedily retracting. Meanwhile, a few distance away, a ship was sailing the waters. At the helm of the ship was a figure of a sheep's head. On top of it sat a young man with red open vest and a straw hat. You guys. I think I caught something. Whoa! I didn't expect your Gomu Gomu no fishing to actually catch something luffy. Another young man with a long nose and goggles on his head exclaimed, seemingly excited. Shishishishi. I told you I catch something us up. Sanji. Get ready for today's lunch. A curly eyebrowed man rolled his eyes at the side. Luffy, you better not catch anything too weird. Maybe it's a treasure. On another side, a small reindeer standing on its two legs started to shine his eyes. Ha ha. Chopper, if this is a treasure, I'm keeping it. Not me. I'm the one who caught it so I should keep it. The straw hat wearing boy shouted at a young girl with orange hair with a pinwheel and orange tattoo on her shoulder. Z z z z. As usual, ignoring everything in his surroundings was a green haired man with three swords at the side was sleeping on the side. Um, guys, I don't think it's a fish or a treasure. Quack! A blue haired young girl standing beside a large bird said as she pointed towards the incoming arm. What are you saying, Vivi? If it's not a treasure or fish, what is it? The straw hat wearing boy tilted his head in confusion then turned to look at his own arm that's still retracting. Everyone else on the ship also did the same. Eh. H.M.? I think I heard something. Eh. Boom. The retraction of his arm came at great speed, causing it to recoil and smash to deck along with whatever he caught. When everyone took a look, they all glared at the straw hat wearing boy. Luffy! Look who you just kidnapped. Eh. It's not a fish. Where's my treasure? Sanji. Can we eat him? Hell no! As the rest started to shout among each other, the blue-haired girl came to the unconscious man's side and examined him. He seems unconscious. I think we should at least treat him for now. Eh. We need a doctor. Where's the doctor? The small reindeer panicked exaggeratedly and started to shout. Seeing this, the long-nosed boy slapped his head. You're the doctor here. Ah, that's right. After a few bustles here and there, they finally managed to settle the unconscious man to a room inside. Well, I guess I'll go cook something from what's left for when he wakes up. Sanji. Mine too. Yeah, yeah. Hearing about food, the straw hat wearing boy immediately ignored everything and demanded for food. To which the curly-eyebrowed man can only nod helplessly. 
Usopp, let's use Karu as bait. Maybe we'll catch something this time. Hey! It was at this time that they seemed to have passed through a steamy hot spot and encountered a weird person. The person dressed weirdly and had the ability of the main main no me. The clone clone devil fruit. When he touched someone, he is able to save their image for him to copy when he touches his own face. The ability was, in a sense, incredible as not only the image is copied, but even the physique of the person. Be it a boy or girl, he can become them so long as he wished. By the time he left the ship, Lucas has just awakened. When he woke up, he was now inside a wooden room but there was no one in it at the moment except for him. Where? Lucas muttered and suddenly heard voices from outside. What's wrong, Vivi? You look serious? Nothing, it's just that, one of the man's faces he showed earlier, was my father. Eh. You mean the king? I think the person we just met is the man called Mr. Two from Baroque Works. Bon Clay! What? It wasn't just them who shouted and exclaimed. Lucas also shouted as his eyes turned wide and his mouth almost dropped to the floor. Seeing him out of the room, everyone else also looked towards him. Lucas wondered if he was still in a dream. After all, the ones in front of him right now are. Oh, you're awake. Shishishi. That straw hat, straw hat pirates Captain Monkey D. Luffy. Oi, Luffy! You better have a good explanation to him for suddenly kidnapping him like that. That long nose, God Usopp. Ah, are you feeling better now? That tanuki sized reindeer, cotton candy lover chopper. I wonder if we should charge him with berries for the treatment. That orange hair, cat burglar Nami. H in? Oh, lunch is over there. Eat it if you're hungry. That curly eyebrow, black leg Sanji. Huh? Who's this guy and why is he on our ship? That green hair and three swords, Santori Aurora no Azoro. You should rest up if you're still not feeling well. Quack! Eh? That blue hair and princess like Aura, Alabasta Princess Vivi Nefertari. And Karu! Lucas was confused. It seems that he is in the world of One Piece now, but these two shouldn't be a part of the crew? Hold on. These looks, Robin, Frankie, and Brooke are also not here, eh? Could it be? The start of the Alabasta arc. This, this is when Luffy is finally recognized as a great threat. The time he defeated Crocodile. It took some time, but Lucas finally managed to get a hold of himself. I. Growl asterisk. Lucas blanked out for a moment and suddenly blushed. Eh ha ha, I guess I am hungry. Ha ha ha. Come on then. Let's eat. Luffy. You just ate. As such, Lucas joined everyone to eat. Right, what was your name again? Lucas. You can call me Lucas. Lucas, huh? I'm Luffy. I'm the captain of this pirate ship. Pirate, is it? Ah. Oh. Why, Luffy? Don't just go running around saying you're a pirate. Usopp quickly admonished Luffy for his carelessness. Lucas just smiled wryly and pointed at the logo on the sail. It's all right. I already figured as much when I saw that logo. You guys seem different from the normal ruthless pirates, so I don't have any issues. Ah, you're right, haha. I'm called Usopp. But you can call me Captain Usopp. Hey! I just said I'm the captain. Don't mind those two idiots. Say, where did you come from? Ah, by the way. My name is Nami. Nami rolled her eyes at the two then smiled at Lucas. Lucas was dazed for a while at her beauty. He knows just from the drawings that she would be beautiful, especially so after the two-year time skip, but meeting her directly was another thing. Realizing that he has been staring for a bit longer than he should, Lucas coughed and averted his gaze. I'm not really sure. When I came to, I was already floating in the middle of the sea. Then I was pulled and, well, I guess you know the rest. Hmm, that's really strange, and you don't remember what happened before that? How I got there. 
No, I don't remember. The last thing I remembered was that I was still at my house. Eh? Where is that? Lucas thought for a moment before finally deciding. Anyway, this is another world, there was no use if they knew where he came from. That, I think I'm from another world. Everyone went silent at that before laughing. Ah ha ha. What do you mean another world? Hey kid, are you still asleep or something? Lucas can only smile wryly at their reaction. He placed his hands on his pockets to see if there was something. Sure enough, there was indeed something. His smartphone. When he pulled it out to see if it was still working despite having been submerged in water a while ago, it turns out that it was indeed still working. Thinking he was just lucky, he tapped on the camera button and snapped a picture of Nami's laughing expression. H.M.? What's that? Being suddenly pointed at with a weird object, Nami stopped laughing and asked. Lucas smiled and showed her the screen. Eh? This is, me? Nami Swan. Sanji, seeing the beauty of Nami's smiling face captured immediately had hearts as his eyes. Wow! What's this thing? This is a smartphone. It's a gadget from my world. You can use it to take a picture, video, play games, and a bunch of stuff. He. I guess you are from a different world. I don't think technology like this exists here. Even in the Grand Line. Usopp nodded as he looked at the smartphone from all angles. Nami took the smartphone and started fiddling with it along with Vivi. After a while, they discovered that they can touch the screen and the image would change accordingly. They also found the other pictures saved on the phone. This is? That's my house. Those are my family and friends. Lucas looked at the pictures and sighed thinking he may never see them again now that he is in this new world. However, he didn't stay depressed for long as he quickly snapped out of it. After all, this is the world of One Piece. In here, maybe his dreams would come true. All right. Back to the original topic at hand. Zoro spoke in a deep voice. About that Mr. Two just now. I think we're lucky that we met him. Now we can use countermeasures. After some planning, they all continued their journey as the sea drifted them off to the Sand Kingdom, Alabasta. Suddenly, a strange cat-looking fish appeared from behind. Meow! What is that? A sea cat. Let's eat it. No! Vivi shouted as he smacked Luffy, Sanji, and Zoro who were about to kill the sea monster. You can't eat it. In Alabasta, sea cats are sacred animals. Lucas laughed as he heard that. Truly the world of one piece. Nami walked towards Vivi and said, Vivi, the wind and temperature seem to be stabilized. Yes, we've entered the Alabastan climate zone. The sea cat is more proof. I bet those things behind us are even more proof we're close to Alabasta. Zoro grinned as he looked behind. Vivi and the rest also looked behind and exclaimed, Ships! Right. Behind them, numerous ships lined up with a unique logo on their sails. Hey, they all have Baroque Works signs on them. All the members are coming together. Those are probably the billions. Servants of the officer agents. Everyone looked solemn as they looked at the number of enemies behind them. Stop getting worried. They're nothing. Zoro grinned and Sanji nodded as well. Yeah. All is lost if we lose sight of our true objective. There's only nine of us. Nine, Lucas wondered if he had already begun to change the story. This time, it wouldn't be just eight of them who will attack Crocodile, but nine. And that included Lucas. Lucas began to think of everything he could change in the story, and people he can save. His resolve to stay only grew. Right, what do you plan to do, Lucas? Nami asked Lucas as they began to tie up bandages on their left arms. Hmm? I mean, you don't really have any part in this. I bet you don't even know what's going on. It would be dangerous if you stick with us. Right. In the beginning, this was my fight, 
it's selfish enough that I asked Luffy and the rest to help me but, you are totally unrelated to this. In fact, none of the officers of Baroque Works knows about you yet. Vivi added as well. Hearing this, everyone on the ship looked at Lucas silently, waiting for his response. Lucas smiled and looked at the bandage on his left arm. I know. You guys are probably about to fight this big war, and that the enemies would have mysterious powers or something. He paused for a while then finally sighed. As I told you before, the world I came from is very much different from this one. There's no devil fruits or any kind of power, heck, I haven't been to any kind of fights, it's a completely normal world. He touched the bandage covering his left arm and said, I'll keep this for now, in case we happen to meet each other. At least you won't think I'm a fake, but I'll be separating with you guys once we landed. Everyone was silent for a while but Luffy just laughed. Shi 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 shi. Then that's that. Let's meet again sometime, Lucas. He brought forward his hand and shook Lucas. Lucas smiled as well and said, Yeah. But who knows? Maybe that would be sooner than you think. Ha ha, maybe. Luffy looked into the horizon and saw the island nearing them. Vivi also looked and pointed to a direction. We're coming up to the harbor. Let's stop in that inlet to the west. We need to hide the ship. Luffy grinned and stretched his fist forward. Knowing what he wanted to do, everyone smiled and did the same. Lucas only smiled and watched from afar. Nami saw this and pulled him closer. What are you doing? Come here. But. Shishishi. Don't sweat the details and show your fist. Lucas can only smile wryly and brought his fist forward as well. Okay. Whatever happens from now on, this left arm is proof of friendship. Lucas was excited to be a part of this. He felt that he really is a part of the team. A part of the Straw Hat Pirate crew. Now, let's get on to dry land. To a restaurant. Then Alabasta. Shut up, you idiot. While the crew made a ruckus, both Vivi and Lucas touched the bandage on their left arms and smiled. As soon as they reached land, Luffy immediately jumped off and ran. Restaurant. Wait! They tried to stop him, but who was Luffy? He just ran off and ignored everyone as usual in his own pace. What should we do? Nanohana is a large town. It will be very hard to search for Luffy. Don't worry, Vivi-chan. We'll look for the noisiest spot in town. He'll be there. Sanji assured Vivi who sounded concerned. Nami sighed as well. Anyways, I wish he would pay more heed to the bounty on his head. Especially in a big country like this one. Just let it take care of himself. Let's go eat. We can think things through after that. Zoro said and was about to move when Vivi noticed a strange ship near them. Wait! That's Mr. Three's ship. You mean, he's not dead. That ship can only move through the Daru Daru fruit. He must be in the kingdom. Vivi was worried, but Lucas knew what will happen so he didn't mind it too much. Well, I guess this is where we will part ways, everyone, Vivi, I wish you all the best of luck. With a curt bow, Lucas smiled and headed elsewhere. Everyone looked at each other and sighed. Do you think we'll still see him next time? I don't think so, unless... Zoro looked at the distant back of Lucas and trailed off. Unless? No, it's nothing. Chapter 2, Meeting Koza While Luffy started to meet Ace and being chased by Smoker and the Marines, Lucas headed east of Nanohana. According to the original story, Luffy and the rest would head to Yuba to talk to the rebellions and hopefully convince them to stop the impending war. However, upon reaching it, they will no doubt find nothing but sand and ruins there except for Toto and that the rebel army had already moved to Katoria, a city east of Nanohana. Lucas knew about this but didn't say anything to them as he didn't know how else to explain it. Say that in his world, their whole future is already written and drawn? Lucas doesn't think that that revelation would not cause anything and Lucas didn't want Luffy's heart to be shaken because of it. 
he can only help them to the best they can. After walking for a bit, he finally saw Katoria. Lucas looked at the surroundings and saw a few people moving cargoes here and there. Of course the contents of the cargoes are covered but those were definitely weapons for the rebel army. He only looked at the direction they were going before heading there himself. Please sir. No. Lucas heard a child scream at a clearing in the front. Why not? I'm fit to join the rebellion. I hate the king. Let me fight with you. The child shouted but the man sitting in front of him still shook his head. Show him Falafra. Right. The man beside him nodded and took of the upper part of his clothes. What was revealed was a gouged out shoulder and a missing right hand. He got those wounds protecting me during battle. You want to see the hospital and graveyard too. I'm not afraid of that stuff. The child shouted still. One of my friends in the town next to Arumalu is sick. I know that it's gonna dry up, just like Arumalu did. It's all his fault for stealing the rain. I want to fight too. I'm not afraid of being hurt or dying. Lucas watched the situation unfold and can't help but sigh. Then, go home. Our opinions disagree. We're all afraid. We don't want to fight. Then why are you fighting? Are you nuts? Because the battle has started, the country wished it to happen. We don't want to fight. We have to fight. I don't care whether you understand or not. Go home. B but. I told you to leave. This isn't the place for kids. The man snapped and finally shouted at the kid. The kid let out tears at the corner of his eyes but didn't cry out as he ran away. As he ran, he passed by Lucas who was watching at a distance, this caused him to be noticed by everyone else. Who are you? Are you, by chance, the leader of this rebel group? What of it? Are you looking to join as well? If so, forget it. Just one look at you and I can tell you haven't been to fights before. You're not even a local here. What do you want? Lucas smiled wryly, thinking that he really looks as normal as it gets except for his white hair. I am not here to join you. I came here to stop you. What? Koza, as I see it, if this person intends on stopping us, then he's an enemy. Suddenly, the rebel group raised their weapons and pointed at Lucas. Lucas gulped at the sight of those weapons pointing at him. After all, this is the first time he was pointed a weapon, he can't help but feel overwhelmed. Koza seemed to notice this so he raised his hand to stop everyone. The weapons were lowered but the rebel group were still vigilant. Lucas let out a sigh and felt relieved. Thanks. Don't thank me yet. I may just change my mind. Ha <laughs> ha. Lucas can only let out a dry laugh at his statement. Speak. Just what do you intend to do by stopping us here? Can you even stop us? I can't. Koza frowned when Lucas shook his head. But someone else will. The reason why I am doing it instead is, because she thinks that you are still in Yuba, and that she is headed there right now to stop you. She? Is there a quiet place we can talk? Lucas looked around at the various rebel group gathered here and remembered how the Baroque works had already infiltrated both the rebel group and the royal guards. Fine. In the tent. Koza! Some of Koza's close friends shouted, obviously not agreeing with letting the two be alone. You can come with if you want. If it's your close friends, they should be safe. Koza and the rest looked at Lucas weirdly before nodding and headed into the tent. After they settled inside, Lucas finally spoke. Princess Vivi Nefertari, I think you know her? Koza and everyone looked in shock. This was a name they haven't heard in a long time. Where did you hear this name? Lucas sighed and explained. You have no idea what this princess has been through and the things she had to do for this kingdom while you guys are here fighting against each other. You dash. One of Koza's friends snapped again but Koza held him back. As I said, right now, she's headed towards Yuba with information to stop you and the rebels. She wanted to end this war before it reaches a point where it can no longer be returned from. What information? About that incident with the dance powder. 
What about it? That incident was staged to frame the king. The truth is, Crocodile wanted this kingdom for his own and had been staging for him to capture it. Once the people stopped believing in the king, and once the rebel group and the royal guards kill each other, he would appear to be the hero who will save this kingdom. Koza and the rest were too shocked hearing this information. You don't have to believe me right away. I know that to you, I am but a stranger. Honestly this should have been Diddy's role but she's headed to Yuba now, all I want is just for you to listen. What you do next, is still up to you. Speak. How did you meet Princess Vivi? Lucas nodded. I was drifting in the seas when Luffy and the rest found me. Vivi is also in their ship. Luffy? Yes. Otherwise known as the captain of the Straw Hat Pirates. Pirates. Hearing this word, they frowned immediately. I know you wouldn't believe this but I didn't want to lie. Yes, they are pirates, but right now, they are the only reason why Vivi is still alive. Vivi has been working undercover under Baroque works to find out their leader and why they are plotting against her kingdom. It took her a long time and she had to do things she regret doing just to keep her cover safe. But she found out in the end about Crocodile. Lucas continued. Naturally, this kind of information doesn't come freely. Crocodile knows that she knows and had been sending assassins to kill her every step of the way. Even now, as we speak, assassins are still after her life. Hearing this, Koza and the rest were solemn and continued to remain silent. Look, as I said, I'm just a stranger. To you and to Vivi. I mean, seriously. They literally picked me off the sea. I didn't know any of them until earlier, but they gave me food even when they're already out of it. They took me in their care and said I was their friend. I'm weak. That's why I stayed out of this fight because I know I'll be a burden to them. From the point of Koza and the rest, they would think that Lucas had already separated with Vivi and them when he found out that the rebel group was actually here in Katoria and not in Yuba. By the time he found out, Vivi and them are already on the way to Yuba and there was no time to chase after them which was why he decided to confront them now. Of course, the truth was that Lucas already knew that they are in Katoria but didn't know how to tell Luffy and the others and how to explain why he knew about it. But I still wanted to help. Somehow. In some way. That's why I'm here. A guy like Crocodile will no doubt have spies on both the rebel and royal guards. Koza, I know it's a lot to take in, especially now that it had reached this point, but this is the truth. Lucas looked at Koza in the eye with utmost sincerity and seriousness. Everyone else also looked at Koza, awaiting his decision. After a while, Lucas saw that Koza still remained silent, he sighed and decided to leave. Anyway, there are plenty of ways he can try to help Luffy and the others without fighting. Just before he left, he said another detail to them. Right now, after Vivi finds out that you are not in Yuba, they will no doubt head towards Rain Base and attack Crocodile directly. Even with Luffy and the others are there, I don't think they can beat him just yet. The day after tomorrow, a fake king will arrive in Nanohana and start the war, you must not give in to hatred, Koza. Lucas left and started to plan out. He was just one man and he can't be everywhere at once. Judging by the time, Mr. Three had already went to find Crocodile, as a result, he now knows that Luffy and the others are still alive. As for Luffy and them, they should have arrived in Yuba by now and Karu is almost at Alyabarna to deliver the news to the king. By tomorrow, Luffy and the royal guards would be heading towards Rain Base in an attempt to attack Crocodile while the rebel army heads towards Alyabarna. The day after that will be when Crocodile launches his plan Utopia. Next would be to head back to Nanohana, where the fake king will make things worse. Lucas looked as the sinking sun and decided to leave quickly to rest in Nanohana. The distance of Katoria and Nanohana isn't that great and could be reached within the day. By the time he reached Nanohana, it was already nighttime. Lucas looked for a place with covers to sleep in. He doesn't have any money so he can't afford an inn. He can only rest in a shade somewhere in the city. It was cold at night but Lucas ignored it and let himself sleep to get ready for tomorrow. When the sun rose again, he got up and started to warm up. 
In this world where the strong rules, he can't always be too weak. He needed to start training his body now. He started with 20 push-ups and 20 laps around a park. Before this, Lucas didn't bother exercising at all so his limit was absolutely low. After resting for a bit, he started training again and added five more push-ups and five more laps. He was nearly unable to complete it but managed to do so with sheer will. He was dead tired after that but forced himself not to sit down. Damn, I'm really pathetically weak, at this rate, how long will it be till I can train hockey? In order to deal with Lovia Devil Fruit users like Crocodile, it's a must to learn armament hockey. Observation hockey can also greatly impact his future battles and that's an absolute must as well. If he wanted to become strong and stand out, he would definitely need to have these two hockeys. As for the Emperor's hockey, that's something only a few people have and not everyone is born with it. It was useless to hope for him to have it. Naturally, it's best if he has it. All right, that's enough rest. One more. This time, he added another five push-ups and five laps. His arms and legs felt weak and frail afterwards due to him pushing his limits to the extreme. Lucas was no longer able to force himself to stand up and so he collapsed to the ground. Still he was able to force himself to remain conscious. What happened next surprised him. A warm feeling started to flow throughout his body and the pain in his muscles started to soothe. Lucas felt refreshed and suddenly, he was no longer tired. He sat up and looked at his body in confusion. What was that? Lucas asked out loud but there was no one to answer his question. He thought for a while before finally giving up as he truly had no answers. He could only resume his training now that it came to this. As usual, he added five more sets on his next training but the strange thing was, even after completing them, he was still completely fine. Lucas was confused but still had no answers for it. Adding more and more sets, Lucas discovered his limit is now at 50 push-ups and 50 laps. He collapsed again after hitting this new limit but still forced himself to stay conscious. The warm feeling came again and his body was refreshed. Lucas sat up again and felt his body. Afterwards, he broke into laughter. Ha ha ha. I don't know what's happening but this is my chance. Lucas pushed on his training endlessly. There was nothing else he can do at the moment but wait anyway. The main event starts from tomorrow onwards. Till then, he would try his hardest to upgrade his strength. Night fell and morning came. Lucas did not bother to eat as he didn't have money. He simply trained like a madman and ended up being able to do 1,000 push-ups and 1,000 laps. After waking up, he looked at the far distance and muttered, Luffy and them should be captured already by Crocodile along with Smoker. But Sanji's there and he isn't captured so they should be good. Lucas then focused on the events that will happen here in Nanohana. Just as he predicted, the king made his rounds in the city and announced something. I have an apology to make. I am the one who stole this country's reign. The crowd was in disarray at this revelation. And in order to forget this annoying dance powder controversy, I am going to destroy Nanohana. H. How can this be? Your Majesty. Everyone started to panic as the soldiers started to begin their move. But before they could start hitting people, a person appeared on the scene. What the hell do you think you're doing? Koza has appeared with a horse. The king saw him and calmly answered. I have come to apologize. Be silent. Enough with the insults. Koza shouted but the king continued without minding him. The one who died up this country with dance powder was I. I told you to shut up. You filthy piece of crap. Koza tried to attack him but was held back by the guards. Seeing all these unfold, Lucas sighed and stepped forward. Your Majesty. Huh? Who are you? You! The king looked at Lucas in confusion while Koza was surprised to see him step out. Lucas was calm and pointed at his own left cheek. Your makeup is showing. Ah! The king inadvertently touched his face with his left hand in surprise but soon regretted it. The main main no me. Once the user touches someone with their right hand on the face, 
they can copy that person's appearance. But once they touch their own face with their left hand, well, they revert back to their original appearance. Everyone's eyes went wide as they saw their king suddenly change face. Ah! Oh, they found out. Mr. Two. Immediately panic went pale. Koza saw this and his whole body started to tremble. This was it. This proof is enough. Hear me! Citizens of Nanohana! Koza shouted with a loud voice that resounded to everyone's ears. Take a look and see this fake king. He and his people are the ones responsible for destroying our home. For drying our land. For shaking our beliefs. Streams of tears started to flow on Koza's face as he remembers everything he had done and how foolish he was. No more! This is where we stand up and fight. It is our time to defend our king. Defend his reputation. His people. His kingdom. Long live King Cobra. Kill those bastards for destroying our peace and framing our king. Everyone's eyes went red as they all felt selfish and foolish to doubt their king. Even when they didn't admit it, they knew in their hearts that they began to doubt the king. Now, seeing this revelation, they can't help but be mad at themselves. Koza, especially, is angry at himself. Mr. Two saw this and immediately grimaced. He turned towards Lucas who had caused this incident. You! Who are you and how did you know about this? Lucas grinned and raised his left arm with the bandage. My name is Lucas. I am, Straw Hat Luffy and Princess Vivi's friend. Mr. Two gritted his teeth and wanted to kill him but saw the human wave rushing in rage. He thought for a while before deciding to run away. He needed to tell Crocodile that the plan has changed. Suddenly, a huge ship came crashing from the shore. Lucas saw this and turned towards Koza. Koza, don't mind them for now. The people need a leader to guide them. Put out the fires first. Koza saw the retreating Mr. Two and the panicking people. He bit his lip and decided that Lucas was right. The people's lives are more important now. Meanwhile, a distance away. A strange turtle with a hat was dragging along a carriage through the desert. What? You revealed your image. Miss Doublefinger shouted at Mr. Two. How was I supposed to know there was another person involved? The intel was wrong. To think that they had someone in Nanohana. It's as if they know our plans. Mr. One frowned. Either the opponent is really smart, or there's a traitor in our midst. We need to tell the boss. The three went silent for a while before deciding to finally call Crocodile with the Din Din Mushy. As the one who caused the failure, Mr. Two was the one who rang. After a while, an annoyed voice resounded. Mr. Two, how goes the mission? Why don't you tell Princess Vivi here what her father just did? At this moment, Luffy and the rest along with Smoker are trapped in a cage made of sea stones and unable to get out. Princess Vivi was also captured and is forced to seat with Crocodile. Vivi heard the name Mr. Two and can't help but remember his ability. Her face paled as she feared for the worst. T that, Zero Chan, the plan failed. Huh. Instantly, Crocodile's expression dropped. There was a kid named Lucas there with the rebellion's leader, Koza. He knew who I was and my abilities. Who's this brat? He said, he's a friend of Straw Hat Luffy and Princess Vivi. Hearing the name Lucas, Vivi, and the rest were all surprised. Lucas! Lucas still hasn't left. He met with the rebellion. Vivi was surprised that this boy they met in the sea had actually been the one to turn the tides. Hearing how he's with Koza now made her heart at ease. Luffy grinned and laughed. Shishishi. You guys are in for it now. Crocodile's hand trembled in rage and destroyed the table. He looked at Miss All Sunday and shouted, Give me this Lucas and kill him. What about the plan? Doesn't matter if the rebel group is no longer against the king. The plan continues. Miss All Sunday nodded and left the building. Vivi and the others saw this and can't help but be worried. Luffy grinned at them and said, Don't worry. 
He's smart. He'll be fine. Zoro chuckled as well and continued to lay back. Heh, he sure is something. Seeing them like this, even Smoker can't help but feel intrigued about this Lucas person. Just what kind of man be able to put a dent on Crocodile's plans? Chapter 3 Confronting Crocodile Back in Nanohana Lucas watched on as Koza took the stage once the fires were put out. Listen, rebels. From now on, we will no longer be the rebellion. We will now fight for the king. We shall crush the person responsible for destroying our kingdom, the Shichibukai, Crocodile. Defend the king. Defend Alyabarna. Yawa. Long live the king. As Lucas saw this, he can't help but smile. In the original story, this was supposed to be the part where Koza attacks Alyabarna. Yet now, they are acting to defend it. With this, maybe we can end this war with the least amount of people dying. Lucas knew about Vidi's naivete about wanting a war to end without anyone dying. He knows that such a thing is impossible in a war. The best he can do is hope to minimize the casualties. Lucas joined Koza and the rest as they rode horses straight to Aliabarna. The distance was great but due to their urgency, they still arrived within the day. Koza, Vivi, and the others should be reaching here soon. But Crocodile's men are already here. They're strong. Right now, only Luffy's crew can defeat them. What about Crocodile then? Luffy can defeat him. Definitely. Koza saw the shirty in Lucas' eyes and smiled. It seems you really trust this person. Yeah. He will one day become the Pirate King after all. Lucas laughed. After a while, they finally had Aliabarna in their sights. Koza! There's someone in front. Someone pointed out and caused Lucas to look as well. He frowned as he saw the person in front of him. That black hair and figure, the devil's child Nico Robin. Everyone stopped as they reached her. Step aside. We are in a hurry. Koza shouted but Robin merely smiled and was still calm. Koza, head first, I'll deal with her. You sure? Un. Go! And remember. There is a bomb in the clock tower. If it explodes, it will wipe out the whole city. Hearing this, Robin squinted her eyes in wonder. She truly don't know how Lucas even knew of this. The bombs guarded by two of Crocodile's men. Find the Straw Hat pirates first. They can deal with them. I understand. Let's go. Koza went solemn as he heard this. He gritted his teeth and believed Lucas as he ordered his men. Robin did not mind them and focused only on Lucas. You seem to know a lot. I can say the same to you too, Miss All Sunday. Or is it Nico Robin? Fufu, you even know that. Despite being surprised, Robin only chuckled and remained calm. Lucas sighed as he looked at the distant Aliabarna. Why are you even on Crocodile's side? You know that he doesn't think much of you, right? If you don't give him Pluto's location, he will kill you without any hesitation. And the history pondlif you are looking for is not here in Alabasta. This time, Robin's calm expression fell. Lucas watched Robin remain silent, so he asked, How's Luffy? He should be with that bird man. Still alive. Lucas sighed in relief. In the original story, Robin had indeed saved Luffy from the brink of death without Crocodile knowing. But this time, there was him and she also came here for him. He was worried that because of this, she didn't get to save Luffy. Well then, are we going to fight? Because honestly, I don't think I can beat you. So you're giving up already? If you were an enemy, I won't. You're saying I'm not the enemy? Yes. Robin was silent for a moment then waved her hand. Suddenly, a pair of hands appeared from behind Lucas, instantly binding his hands. I'll let Crocodile decide your fate. Lucas shrugged and followed her. You don't need to do this, you know? I'll still end up going the same way. It's kinda hard to ride a horse with my hands like this. 
Robin stared back at him with half-closed eyes and sighed, finally deciding to remove her powers. Lucas rubbed his hands after being freed and smiled at Robin. Your powers, there's a lot more to it than you imagine. Robin was still emotionless, but in her mind, she can't help but wonder what's wrong with this guy. For a while now, he has been treating her like a friend who is simply playing as the enemy. It was a weird feeling for her but at the same time didn't feel repulsed by it. In the distance, Lucas heard explosions here and there. The fight has started but Lucas wasn't worried. He knew the power of the Straw Hat Pirates. They will definitely win. Robin also didn't mind the explosions as they walked calmly to the palace where Crocodile, Vivi, Shaka and King Cobra are. Robin, you're finally here. And I see you brought someone with you. Lucas! Vivi turned to see Lucas behind Robin and can't help but worry. Lucas just smiled at her as if everything's okay. Vivi, we meet again. Lucas, why are you? Humph. So this is that Lucas guy that disrupted my plans from the start. Crocodile heard his name and immediately rushed towards him as his lower half dissolved into sands. Seeing this, Vivi thought to herself how stupid she was to say his name. Now Crocodile knows. Lucas will definitely be in trouble. Lucas! Run! However, Lucas didn't move and let Crocodile clutch his neck as he looked directly into his eyes. Crocodile smiled and chuckled. Hee hee, that look in your eyes are annoying. Why don't I get rid of it? His right hook moved closer to Lucas' eyes in an attempt to scare him but Lucas was still calm. Crocodile, I wouldn't do that if I were you. Robin? What's the meaning of this? Crocodile frowned as he saw Robin stop and then noticed how Lucas came without any injuries or binds. Robin was still calm as ever as she answered. He knows about the Pluto. This time, Crocodile and King Cobra's eyes went wide. Lucas gave a wry smile when he heard Robin speak about it. Give me a break, Robin. I only know what it is, but not where it is. Era, is that so? Lucas rolled his eyes when he saw Robin's teasing look. The Pluto, I've heard that using it once would be enough to make a whole island disappear. With the name of a god, it's the most evil ancient weapon. That thing should sleep somewhere within this country. Crocodile smiled as he glared at King Cobra who was nailed to the wall. My original purpose was to own it. As long as I got it, I can build the strongest military country here. A weapon? That kind of thing, in this country. Is it something that is passed along the crown? Both Vivi and Chaka were visibly shocked at this revelation. King Cobra gritted his teeth. The world government will not allow that to happen. Therefore, I need a bigger military force. I don't know where you heard that name, I don't know where that thing is, and I don't know if it even exists or not. King Cobra said as he stubbornly refused to give out any information. Crocodile didn't mind it though, he has another way of letting King Cobra speak. H.M., that's right. Of course I know the value of it is dubious, but the force gathered in front of the palace ground this afternoon, at four o'clock, thirty minutes from now, a very powerful cannon will aim here. You! King Cobra and the rest glared at Crocodile with utmost hate. It has been special made, allowing nothing in five kilometers to grow anymore. So from here, the scenery might change a little you see. Thirty minutes from now. Five kilometers. If you do this. Vivi's face paled as she thought of what would happen. Isn't it great? With one blow, both the rebel group and you all will die a painless death. How can you do this kind of things? What wrong have they done to you? Vivi shouted at Crocodile, but he ignored her cries. Boring. While they had this farce, Robin took a sidelong glance at Lucas who knew about this already. Lucas saw her look and brought his index finger closer to his lips in a shushing gesture. All right, Mr. Cobra. Back to the problem before. Where is the thing that has the true history written down? Cobra was surprised that he even knew this. He thought for a while then spoke. If I take you there. Hmm? King Cobra was silent for a moment then sighed. Father. All right. 
I will take you there. Ha ha ha. Indeed it's King Cobra. He knows his job. Crocodile laughed, but at the side, Shaka can no longer hold it in as his hands reach for his weapon. Princess Vivi, I cannot bear it any longer. However, before he could start, more people arrived at the scene. Please wait! General Shaka. Who is it this time? Crocodile frowned hearing all the noise. You guys. The Duck Claw Squad. Robin was silent as a wound started to appear on her hands. It seems that they had passed through the barricade she had made with her hands at the gate. Though it seems that Hope had arrived, King Cobra did not believe so as he believes they cannot beat Crocodile. Please stay away. Do not make him angry. Your Majesty, protecting you with our lives, that's our job. How could you tell us to stop? Your Majesty. We must protect you. Release the king now. To fight against one of the Shichibukai. We shall show no fear. Crocodile only snorted as he heard this farce. You guys have good spirit, so I'm letting you go. Hurry up and get lost. How could we? We can only go forward for one reason. Reason? Suddenly, strange marks started to appear on their arms as their muscles started to bulge and grow. Chaka paled as he saw those marks. Your arms! Could you guys have? Shaka! What's wrong with them? Vivi asked as she saw the changes in their state as well. In order to gain temporary strength, they drank the water which reduces life. Heroes water, we can't save them now. They only have a few minutes left. Vivi's face paled even more as she heard this. Why? Ha ha ha. I knew it. In order to fight me, you don't need your lives. Even then, Crocodile just laughed it off. Lucas also sighed. He knew this was going to happen, but he truly don't know where this hero's water is to begin with, nor did he know when they took it. But he can take this situation as his advantage. Just as the four from the Duck Claw squad charged, Lucas also charged along with them with a dagger in his hands. Lucas! Ha ha ha! So now you're also attacking. Lucas gritted his teeth and stabbed towards Crocodile just before he could turn to sand. Humph. What fools! Crocodile's face changed as he saw the dagger actually stabbed into his body. How? He shouted but saw that the four from the Duck Claw Squad also nearing him, he immediately tried to retreat. Still, one of the blade had hit him at that time and he was injured again. As he retreated, his eyes glared at Lucas who held the dagger. Lucas grinned and took out his water container and poured it at his blade. Could it be? Heh. Crocodile. The only reason you're cocky is because you know that in this half of the sea, there will be no one who can touch you. Well, you're wrong. Crocodile's expression fell as he knew what Lucas meant. But despite this, he was only injured for a bit. It wasn't enough to kill him. Seeing as they managed to at least injure Crocodile, the four Duck Claw squad smiled as they collapsed because of the effect of Hero's water. Crocodile laughed at the sight of them with ridicule. What stupidity! You damn bastard! Shaka saw his men being ridiculed despite being dead and really unable to hold it in anymore as he charged towards Crocodile. His body transformed with the power of the Inu Inu no Mi model, Wild Wolf. Shaka! Lucas thought that if he had at least injured Crocodile, Shaka would see sense and not charge in like in the original story, but it seems that some things can never change. Hey! Use the water! However, Shaka did not pay attention to anything they said and Simple charged in. Heh, like an animal. Wolf fangs! Crocodile sneered at him as his body dissolved into sand once more as he was struck. The result was as everyone expected. With Shaka lying on the ground covered in blood and Crocodile standing over him. After half killing Shaka, he set his eyes on Lucas who injured him just now. You're next. This time, he didn't let Lucas have enough time to attack him as he immediately dissolved into sand and rushed towards him. His right claw swung and stabbed at his chest. GH- Not so tough without your water, huh? 
he wasn't over. With his powers, he actually still drained Lucas, revealing a shriveled, dried-up corpse. Lucas! Vivi cried as she saw Lucas drying up like a mummy. Thud. His body collapsed to the ground beneath Crocodile's feet. Crocodile glared at the body. Being weak is a sin. Chapter 4, Crocodile's End As Lucas lay to the ground, he saw his life flash before his eyes. His life in his home world. His friends and family. His meeting with the Straw Hat Pirates. His first meal with them. His left arm which carries the mark of their friendship. Am I gonna die now? Lucas thought to himself and wondered if it was not okay to die. No. I can't die yet, there are still many things I want to experience. Many things I want to change. And many more I want to meet. Suddenly, somewhere in his body, a warm flow started to emerge and spread throughout his body. This change can only be felt by him and not everyone else. This is, I see, so this is, my power. As Lucas began to explore this newfound power, another figure appeared at the scene. Koza! So it really is. Koza looked at Lucas who lay dead at Crocodile's feet and sighed. Lucas! Vivi heard him and can't help but feel saddened again. Robin also didn't want to look at Lucas' body, for fear she may feel something and expose herself. Heh, if it isn't the leader of the rebellion, Koza. It's nice meeting you for the first time. Crocodile Dash. You will pay for this. Stop it! Koza! King! Koza was about to charge at him, but King Cobra stopped him. The only thing you can do is to leave here now, Go back and save the lives of the people. As many as you can. Within thirty minutes, the palace square will be blown up. Shaka uttered as he continued to lay on the ground. So you're still not dead. Crocodile snorted and dealt another blow at him. Vivi covered her eyes while Koza gritted his teeth. It's too bad. Huh? Crocodile frowned seeing Koza's reaction. He had expected him to dash off and try to evacuate people, but he actually did not move. Lucas told me about your plan. And the location of the bomb. Koza sneered at Crocodile. That bomb, we have long since pulled it away from here. Even if it detonates, it will only destroy the dessert. Then multiple figures appeared from behind Koza. Zaro, Nami, Sanji, Usopp, Chopper. Lucas. No. Bastard. You will pay for this. Damn it. How dare you kill our friend. Lucas. Crocodile's face started to twist. He was truly enraged now. Never would he have thought that the insignificant insect he just killed to have known so much and continued to disrupt his plans even when he's dead. Vivi's eyes started to pour tears again as she saw the crew. You guys. After realizing what Koza meant, her eyes turned towards Lucas who laid on the ground motionless and even more tears flowed. Lucas. Just as everyone is about to fight, a loud voice came from above. Crocodile. Riding on top of Pell who had changed into a bird. Luffy. The straw hat guy. Crocodile's face went black in anger. This guy. This guy again. Why is he still not dead? Pell landed in front of everybody along with Luffy carrying a water barrel behind his back. Weren't your wounds mortal? How are you still alive? Crocodile frowned but Luffy ignored him and focused on the body lying down beneath Crocodile. Seeing Lucas dried up corpse, Luffy's face turned angry as he glared at Crocodile. However, he didn't charge at him just yet. Sorry, I lost to that guy once, so this time I can't lose. Hearing him apologize like that, everyone else just smiled. Hurry up with it. If you can't win, who can? Luffy's eyes stared dead at Crocodile with resolution. I'll finish it now, all of it. Saying this, he started to charge at Crocodile. Krukuk. No matter how many times you try, you guys can't hit me. Crocodile sneered, but Luffy still charged at him. So you want to be impaled again, eh? 
His body started to dissolve again, but before he can do so, Luffy's fist knocked on Crocodile's face. Still, he wasn't finished. His hands stretched and grabbed Crocodile's shoulder as his body rotates. Gomu Gomu no. Buzzsaw. The moment his feet left the ground, he performed a spinning kick at Crocodile's face. Shishishi. King Cobra and Robin both looked at Luffy in surprise as they saw Crocodile hit the ground. Luffy wasn't satisfied yet. Stand up. I know your weakness now. That's why you keep on taking the rain. You're scared of it. Water is your weakness. As long as I use this, I can beat you up. The show is just beginning. Crocodile sat up and laughed. What? Do you really think you can beat me? I am one of the Shichibukai. One of the seven gods of the sea. Huh? You're one of the seven gods? So what? Then I'll be the eight god. Nami and the rest can only facepalm as they heard this. The fight soon continued with Luffy throwing punches here and there and developing new techniques. Enough! Sandstorm! Crocodile released a sandstorm that blew Luffy and his water barrel away. Water barrel! Luffy hurriedly caught on the barrel before he landed. Ha ha ha! You really are into this fight, eh? If you lose your water barrel, you're out of tricks. In that case, how are you different from last time? You're right. It wouldn't be any different. Luffy frowned as he knew Crocodile was right. Then how about this? If it's like this, I'm different from the last time. You're not serious. Crocodile's face twitched as he saw Luffy's current form. Water Luffy. Burp. Boing. What Luffy did was to drink all the water from the barrel revealing a fat, bouncy Luffy. Nami and the rest collapsed to the ground. It's over. Their captain is a huge idiot. Oh no! I'm leaking. Is this kid serious? Damn, drank too much. I shouldn't drink too much water. Ha ha ha. Robin couldn't take it anymore and laughed. Crocodile was even more pissed. You damn kid! What the hell are you joking about? Luffy looked back at Crocodile and pumped his arms then spitting a ball of water towards Crocodile. Now his whole body is drenched in water. Who's kidding? I'm always serious. Luffy's arms stretched all the way back. Gomu Gomu no, rocket punch. The insane force was enough to make Crocodile spit blood and be blown away, crashing at a small building behind him. How's that? Crocodile? King Cobra could not believe his eyes. I can't believe it, G.H. Dash. Right now is not the time just to appreciate it, Mr. Cobra. Robin waved her hands and took off the nails stuck on King Cobra. You should hurry up and take me to the place where the true history is written. Why do you want to see that thing? What are you planning? It doesn't matter to you. Take me to that place. Robin then turned to Luffy and the others. Ha ha ha, your good luck ends here. No more time left for you. Hurry up, Nico Robin. If you don't want to turn dry too. I am freaking pissed. Crocodile stood up from the rubbles and shouted at Robin. As you wish. Robin immediately retreated away with King Cobra. You think we'll let you get away. Father! Vivi and the others tried to stop her, but with a single wave, Numerous hands appeared beside their feet and hands, instantly binding them in place. Straw Hat, you listen. Every rock on this earth will be destroyed. Crocodile exerted his power to the ground and the grass started to shrivel and die. The grass turned yellow. The trees too. The surface of the ground got dry. Cracks started to appear on the ground and begun to collapse. Seeing this, Luffy hurriedly shot more water towards Crocodile as he fell. But Crocodile wasn't someone who would fall for the same trick. He moved his hand forward and touched the water with his hand. The water immediately cried. He used his hands and absorbed it. You think you took away my ability, Water Luffy? Then you're wrong. You see, this hand can make anything dry without limits. 
even trees, rocks, or dirt. The ground and everything around him started to turn to sand after being dried to the extreme. Turn everything back into sand. Ah! My sandals too! Luffy hurriedly shook off his sandals as it slowly turned into sand. Everything touched by my hand will dry into sand. Eh! Luffy, Nami, and the others all paled as they heard this. Mass erosion. Luffy immediately grabbed everyone and jumped off the walls but was caught by Crocodile. The others fell but with Pell with them, they managed to land safely. Crocodile now had Luffy at his grasps. With his hand, he dried his body up just like Lucas. But before be dried up, Luffy managed to shoot some water balls up in the air. This time, you lose again. Straw Hat Luffy Crocodile released his hand and caused the shriveled Luffy to fall to the ground. Time to go. Looking at the direction where Robin left, Crocodile dissipated into sand once more and flew away. At this time, the water balls that Luffy shoot up managed to fall back to himself, immediately hydrating him. Puha! I thought I was dead for sure. Luffy! The others immediately surrounded him. Where did that croc go? He went that way. I am not letting you go easily. Let's go! As Luffy and the rest ran after Crocodile, back at the palace, a man that once lay down the ground, thought to be dead, opened his eyes. Lucas' body started to expand. His previously shriveled corpse now looked completely normal. He sat up and looked at his hands. I see, this power, was from that fruit I ate back home? I thought it tasted weird at that time. Just before he got to this world, he indeed ate a strange fruit in the fridge. Mainly because there was nothing else to eat and he was too lazy to cook anything so he just ate it. He doesn't really know why that fruit was there but he understood that it was the reason why he arrived here in the world of One Piece. When he arrived here, he was already submerged in water, so if it was a devil fruit, then he should have drowned. So what is it then? Lucas watched as his own hand turned into water. From what he remembers, there is no such thing as a Logia water devil fruit. Such a thing shouldn't exist since seawater is the devil fruit's enemy. How come he suddenly has it? Lucas knows, this power, it was created to counter crocodile's sand power. His power is to create powers that will counter anything that can cause harm to him. This explains why he got healed after breaking his limits every time. It was as if his body is supplying what he needs immediately. Water counters crocodile's sand. This created a new Logia power in Lucas. The power of water. This isn't all. Lucas touched the ground with his hand. The previously dead leaves and trees suddenly shone and grew. While crocodile's sand can decay everything to sand, Lucas' water can give life to them. Lucas turned to the four duck claw squad and thought for a bit before deciding to try it out as well. Their bodies glowed a dim light and their breathing was restored. Still, they had remained unconscious due to their previous state. They should wake up in a few minutes. Lucas can't really bring people back to life. These four were just severely wounded but they still had a small breath in them. It was enough for him to save them. After he was done healing the four, Lucas looked around and saw no one else was there. If they're not here, they should be at the temple by now. Lucas wasn't worried. He knows Luffy is there and is enough to deal with Crocodile. What he needs to do now is to save this country. He raised his hand high up and shot a stream of water into the sky. Drip. It started small, then it grew into a drizzle, then the rain started pouring. At the same time, a figure shot out to the sky, Crocodile. Luffy had done it. He defeated Crocodile. It's over, though there was never a war this time, but nonetheless, everything is over. Lucas looked over the city filled with people celebrating under the rain and smiled. Chapter 5 Peace Inside the Palace Vivi watched the rainfall from the window inside the room where the rest of the Straw Hat Pirates slept. Igarum, who has just returned, patted her shoulder. Can't sleep? No, I can. It's just that I wanted to watch the rain for a bit longer. 
Lucas walked towards them with a smile. It's over, Vivi. Crocodile's gone. No one will steal the rain anymore. Lucas. Vivi let out a tear as she saw Lucas. In truth, when she saw him again earlier, she had also cried for a long time and even embraced Lucas making him no idea what to do. Really, I cannot thank you enough. If it were for you. I already told you, Vivi. I was simply in the right place at the right time. If it were you who had met Koza earlier and not me, things would be much simpler. Lucas laughed. He looked towards the sleeping Luffy and the rest. Really, the ones that saved the day were these people. Vivi laughed. For a while, there was this strange atmosphere between them but Lucas didn't notice it as he simply looked out the window as well and watched the rain. Truthfully, this rain just now was no longer the rain he had made. His rain was supposed to only last for a while but a real rain came afterwards. Still, he wasn't too concerned about it. He knows that even without his help, there would still be a rain anyway. All he did was to call it earlier than scheduled. Igarum noticed the subtle atmosphere between them and patted Vivi again before leaving quietly. Vivi blushed and glared at him as he retreated. Lucas looked at her and saw that she had her head down as if worried over something. He thought for a while and patted her head. Vivi was surprised and looked up to him. You don't need to worry too much, Vivi. I know you will become a great princess, and someday, a great queen. Vivi was silent for a while then asked as she looked straight at his eyes. How can you be so sure? Lucas was taken aback then laughed. Well, some people are just meant to be great. Just as Luffy is destined to be the Pirate King, you are destined to be a great ruler. Vivi pouted at his answer. But how can you know? Yeah. I if you are by my side, how can you know I'll be a great queen? Uh. Lucas didn't know how to answer or what she was trying to say but a strange thought came to his mind. Vivi, you don't need me to become a great queen. You are fine as you are now. Vivi started to pout even more as she glared at Lucas. With a wry smile, he placed his hand on her head again. Vivi, I can't be with you. There must be a reason why I was put in the path of Luffy. I want to go with them and sail the seas. I want to make Luffy the pirate king. You just said that Luffy is destined to be a pirate king. You don't need to be there too. Error. Lucas was now at a loss for words. He truly don't know what to say. Though the idea of staying and be with Vivi did tempt him, he still wanted to sail the seas and have adventures. Vivi sighed and dropped her head. I know you wouldn't stay, as well as Luffy and the rest, it's just, I will miss you guys. Well, I will also miss you of course. The others too. I'm sure they will miss you, in fact, they are probably thinking that you will join them now. But, I can't. I know. For a long time, the two went silent as they both quietly watched the rain. Several days had passed by. The others soon woke up and began to busy themselves with preparing while Luffy still slept. Whoa, whoa. I slept very well. Finally, Luffy woke up. Huh? Hat? My hat? I feel very hungry. Where is my breakfast and my hat? It's already dinner time. Also, your hat's here. Wow, thanks. Lucas handed the straw hat to Luffy with a wry smile. Luffy took the hat and put it on then looked at Lucas again. He stared at him for a while before suddenly screaming. Ah! Lucas Ghost! I'm still alive, Luffy. What? Oh, that's good then. You just accepted it. Usopp smacked Luffy with an incredulous expression. Back when they woke up and found Lucas still alive, they raised a fuss and barraged Lucas with questions nonstop. Yet Luffy just accepted the fact like it was normal. Oh, Luffy, you're awake? Zoro! Long time no see. Long time no see? Zoro came into the room and looked a bit tired. Ah. Hey! Don't tell me you went to train again. Chopper immediately made a fuss as soon as he saw Zoro taking off his bandages without his permission. 
Long time no see? Lucas laughed and explained seeing as how Luffy is still confused. You've been asleep for three days now, I guess that's why you felt that way. Three days! Which means, I missed fifteen meals. How come you can count those kind of things so fast? And he counted five meals a day. Vivi laughed at that. Don't worry. Dinner's ready. It wasn't long when the whole crew was guided to the dining hall and mountains of food were lined up on the table. Luffy, seeing all these foods, immediately began to devour them all. There wasn't anyone who minded their table manners at all. Eat faster. Before Luffy takes them all. Luffy! You just took my plate. Seconds. Is that still counted as seconds? Lucas laughed at the sight of Luffy and the rest eating like there's no tomorrow. Suddenly, he thought of something and pulled out his smartphone and began taking pictures and videos of everyone. At first, the soldiers at the side looked at them with contempt due to their improper table manners. But after a while, when most of the food was already cleared out, Usopp began balancing a stack of plates on his long nose which made everyone laugh. After some time, they were led to the bath. That's the best meal I have ever had. I thought of a quiet and tidy meal, but wherever you all are, it would turn into a party. King Cobra laughed. At the side, Luffy and Usopp both stood beneath a lion's mouth where water was pouring like a waterfall. Zoro! Look! We can do training. What training? Meanwhile, Sanji asked Igram. Hey! Where is the girl's bath? Eh? Eh? As if I would tell you. It's over that wall. Your Majesty, you crook. Seeing this, Lucas laughed and joined in on the fun as well. Anyway, even the king is going to look, Lucas didn't want to miss out. Just as they looked over from the top of the wall, Nami and Vivi turned and saw them. Hmm? Hey, what are you doing? Vivi screamed, but Nami just sighed. Those guys. She stood up with the towel still on, but only for a moment as it dropped off. Happiness punch. That'll be 100,000 from each person. Nami! Luffy and the rest immediately spurted blood from the nose and dropped down, including the king. Lucas just laughed and gave Nami a thumbs up before dropping off as well. Nami was stunned at that. Surprisingly, Lucas handled himself well. Thank you all. While laying on the ground with blood still dripping from his nose, King Cobra suddenly said which made everyone look at him weirdly. Perverted old man. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the country. While still sitting cross-legged, the king, no, Cobra Nefertari bowed to Luffy and the rest. Hey hey, is it alright for you to do this as a king? Cobra, your majesty, this is a big matter. Kings shouldn't bow their heads. Igarum, status exists if you wear your clothes. But here is the bath. There isn't a naked king. I am thinking as a father, with a citizen's heart. To thank you. Thank you, everyone. Shishishishi. Luffy grinned and laughed in response. Nighttime. The rest of the crew along with Lucas and Vivi gathered in the room. I think this is the right time to go. What do you think? Yeah, the Marine has started moving too. Luffy, it's up to you. All right. We should have another Alabastan meal before we go. We must go now. Idiot. You are. Vivi was silent as she watched them plan on leaving. In truth, she wanted to go with them. She really wanted to go on an adventure and sail the seas with them. The times when they were together were short, but those were memories that she cannot let go of. Lucas saw her struggling, he sighed and placed his hand on her head. Lucas, there's no need to think so much. No matter what decision you make, I'm sure it would be the right one. Vivi sank in her thoughts more. Lucas sighed again but already decided on himself. It should be the time now when the new bounty posters for Luffy and Zoro to appear. With this new bounty, the marines would be moving in on them. Suddenly, a call from a Den Den Mushi came in from Mr. Tu who had taken going Mary to a safe location. 
After thinking that it is probably safe to trust the guy, they all began to leave. Everyone, tell me, what should I do? In the end, Vivi still don't know what to do as she still feels conflicted. Vivi! Listen up. We'll give you 12 hours. When we get our ship back at Sandora River, then at midday tomorrow exactly, we will pass through the east coast. I'm afraid we can't stop there but forget it. If you like to come to travel with us again, that's the only time you can come aboard. When it's time, we'll welcome you, but it's pirate's adventure. Nami explained as everyone got ready to jump off the window. Hearing this, Lucas made a wry smile and shook his head. Seeing as everyone has gotten off, Lucas also prepared to jump out the window when Vivi called out to him. Lucas! I, Lucas, I. As Vivi began to hesitate, Lucas' expression also kept changing. Finally, he sighed and turned around. Whether you decide to be a pirate or queen, our feelings wouldn't change. The future is up to you. After saying so, Lucas didn't wait to hear Vivi's response and jumped off the window. Vivi watched as Lucas and everyone else safely land and run off quietly out her window. Her cheeks puffed as he glared at the back of a certain man. Humph, just you wait. Meanwhile, on the marine side, Black Jail Hina has begun her preparations. Miss Hina! We found their ship. They docked in the upstream of Sandora River. H.N., prepare for battle. Time passed, Lucas and the others from the Straw Hat Pirates along with Mr. Two set sail along the seas. As expected, the Marines had already surrounded them and began firing metal spears instead of cannons, making Luffy quite pissed. Fire! Fire the cannon! Damn it! Just fire the cannon. I will bounce them back. Don't joke around anymore. If these metal spears break the hull, the ship will sink in no time. Nami shouted. It's coming! Everyone glared at the incoming metal spears and did their best to prevent it from hitting the ship. Lucas frowned and jumped on the railings on the edge of the deck. Hmph, shall we test out this new power of mine? Focusing on his water powers, he found that not only can his body turn into water, he also has the ability to control the surrounding waters. And this included the sea itself. Lucas' palms both faced upwards as he swung it up with all his might as if he was flipping a table. See flip! Then, a huge wave erupted in front of him and descending outwards onto the enemy ships. W what is that? A tsunami! The huge wave instantly swallowed tens of marine ships. It was a pity that none of those ships was the one that Hina was riding. Otherwise, he would have immediately defeated a strong enemy. Well, it did sink a certain iron-knuckled marine and hypnotizer. Wow! Lucas, you're great! Holy God! Luffy's jaw dropped along with Usopp. Lucas smiled wryly with a face that was a bit pale. Ah, that expended more out of me than I thought, it seems I still need to properly train after all. As he said, after that big move just now, about 70% of his energy seemed to have been drained and it was impossible to perform the same move again in a short while. Hearing this, everyone sighed in relief. Damn, if this ability gets further developed, just who will be your match in the sea? Other devil fruit users are afraid of the seawater, but you're the exact opposite. Shi 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 shi. That's Lucas for you. Just as they were feeling relaxed, Mr. Two's men reported. Mr. Bon Clay, bad news. What is it? It's Black Jail. Black Jail Hina. She is the commander of the Marine around here. We better run. She's a tough one. Mr. Two shouted, but Lucas and the others didn't steer away. What are you doing? Let's go. If we head south, we have a small chance of getting out. If we go forward, we will sink. You all just go whichever way you want. We go this way. Luffy answered. But why? We have a meeting at twelve on the east coast. We have no time left. We must go. Hey, really troublesome. Is there any treasure there worth waiting for? Just go and die for all I care. We are going there to pick up our friend.
Chapter 6, Departing and New Crew A Friend Mr. Bond Clay Mr. Two's subordinates shouted as they saw him seem to stay in the Straw Hat Pirate's ship. If we run away now, we're not worthy of being Okama. If we're not able to sacrifice ourselves to help our friends, we will not rest in peace. Mr. Two begun his pose while tears streaming down his eyes. Straw Hat Luffy and the Rascals, listen to me carefully. We will be your decoy and draw them out for you. Bio and Chan. Luffy, Usopp, and Chopper were all crying as they watched Mr. Two transform his face into Luffy's and jumped off to his ship. At the distance, the Marines noticed the two ships separate and immediately reported to Hina. Miss Hina! Their two boats have left their course. The duck ship is going south. Is the duck ship a decoy? No, that's... Straw Hat Luffy and his crew are on the duck ship. The going merry is a decoy. Hina took the binoculars and indeed saw Luffy in the duck ship. Chase them quickly. Full speed ahead. The marine ship are all top-notch, naturally, it wouldn't be any slower than a small ship like the duck ship of Mr. Two. Soon, they were able to surround the duck ship and noticed that Luffy wasn't truly there. In the going merry, Luffy and the rest saw the marine starting to attack Mr. Two's ship. Bon Bon! We... We will never forget you. Lucas sighed. He knew that Mr. Two will survive this, but will be sent to impel down in the future. Maybe he can still change this a bit? But if he changes it, and Luffy still ends up going to impel down in the future, he may not be able to get out without Mr. Two there. Lucas looked at Luffy and the rest then at Mr. Two. Eventually, he shook his head and sighed. Forget it. I'll think about the future once I get there. Lucas stood on the deck once again and raised his hand in a chopping stance. He glared at the sea ahead and gritted his teeth. Ocean! Splitter! He swung down his hand, and the sea split in half all the way to the Marines' ships. The Marines and Mr. Two's ship immediately separated. Using this chance, they sped away from the Marines as fast as they can. Seeing as they were able to get away, Lucas sighed in relief and collapsed to the ground. Lucas! Nami, who was closest to him just now, immediately caught him as he fell. Heh, that, that was something, huh? Lucas weakly laughed as he savored Nami's embrace a bit. Lucas! That was amazing. Are you all right? Doctor! Where's the doctor? You're the doctor. Ah, that's right. Even now, in this situation, they were still joking around, or is it that they're not quite right in the head? In any case, seeing their expressions which were worry, excitement, proud, Lucas felt a sense of belonging in this small ship. In his heart, he thought to himself, I want to see it, the day Luffy becomes the Pirate King. I want to see him reach it alongside him. At this instant, the resolve in his heart grew. Meanwhile, back in the island. Vivi had begun her speech. Tens of thousands were gathered in front of the palace to see her and listen to her voice. But she isn't there. Instead, she began her speech while standing on the edge of the island. I recently went on an adventure. It was an adventure over deep oceans and dark tides in search of hope. The ocean that I faced was vast the day I left this country. It is full of unbelievable islands which hold many things. There are creatures I had never seen, incredible sceneries, and sounds of the waves. They are sometimes so peaceful, it's as if they were trying to cover up all the trouble around us. But sometimes they are so violent, as if they were laughing at the weak. But in the darkness and storms, I found a tiny ship. That ship pushed me forward and told me, Can you see those lights? That ship will always find its way out of the darkness. An unbelievable ship indeed. It's as if it was dancing, sailing through gigantic waves. Even though it seems like they're just drifting, they only go forward, even going against the wind. In the end, it will raise its finger and say, Look, there is light. Even if history will make this light seem like an illusion, they will always be real to me. And with that said, 
Divi's voice trailed off as she saw a familiar ship in the distance. Let's go, it's almost twelve already. She will come, I know it. She is definitely over there. Let's dock and look for her. Luffy insisted, still hoping of having Divi join his crew. Hey! Bad news! The Marines caught up with us. Usopp pointed over to the Marine ships approaching while Zoro began to make preparations to leave. How many are there? Let's sail now. Full speed ahead. Forget it, Luffy. She is different from Divi that was with us. Lucas looked at Luffy and stood up again. Ah, Lucas. You can't move too much yet. You're way too exhausted. I'll hold off the Marines for a few more minutes. What are you saying? Any more of that power and you really will collapse. Lucas ignored them and was about to make another big move when suddenly, a familiar voice shouted over from the island. Everyone! Looking over, they all saw a blue-haired woman wearing a beautiful dress along with a large duck. Vivi! Karu! Look, she came, right! Let's turn back. Quick! Vivi! The marines are closing in. Though Luffy and the rest rejoiced, Lucas looked at Vivi's expression and sighed. He knew that Vivi wouldn't be joining them. I'm here, to say goodbye. What did you say? Carew, give me the speaker. Carew quaked and handed over the speaker she was using just now. I can't go with you all. In the island, everyone was confused as to who the princess was suddenly talking to. Thank you all for what you have done for me. Even though I still want to go with you, but right now I really love this country. So I can't come along. Vivi shouted with all her heart. Hearing this, Luffy was silent for a moment before smiling. Really? I, even though I, want to stay here, but if there is one day where we meet each other again, will you all take me as a friend? As soon as she said that, the marines who also heard her began to panic. Did you hear that? The princess is straw hat Luffy's friend. The princess has pirates for friends. No way! Luffy didn't care about all this and was about to shout back, but Nami held him back. Idiot! We shouldn't answer her. The marines already saw her. If they found out we're friends, they will mark Vivi as a criminal. Let's just park quietly. Vivi naturally knew what they were worried about, but the tears in her face still kept dropping. However, this didn't last long. When she looked over, all seven of them, Luffy, Nami, Sanji, Zoro, Usopp, Chopper, and Lucas were all raising their left arm and had taken off their bandages, revealing the X marks beneath. Seeing this, Vivi and Karu also both raised their left arms as they thought back to the time they all made this mark. From now on, no matter what happens, the sign on this left arm will forever be the sign of our friendship. Let's sail. Just as Luffy and the rest sets off, Vivi shouted at them once more. Lucas! Just you see. I'll become a great queen. When the time comes, I'll definitely not let you get away again. Lucas staggered as he heard her declaration. Panic occurred in the cities who heard this as well. Lucas? Who's that? I don't know, but he seems to be an important person in the princess heart. Kaya, I wonder what sort of man he is for the princess to like him. Damn it! The princess is already taken. No! Not only the citizens, even King Cobra had began to flare up. Chase! Chase that damn bastard. Why, your majesty, we can't. They just saved our country. I don't care. How dare that bastard with my daughter? It was the same in the marine side. Damn it! Which one of those bastards is that Lucas? Shoot! Shoot him down! Kill him! Quickly find out what we know about that bastard. Eh? He was the one responsible for the huge wave and the water splitting earlier. Make a call to HQ. Raise his bounty. But of course, Nothing can be said about the chaos in the Straw Hat pirate ship. Lucas, you bastard. What did you do to my Vivi Chan? Eh? Eh? 
Did something happen between you two that we didn't know? Quickly tell us. Shishishishi. Does that make Lucas the future king then? No! Fully aware of the ruckus that she had created, Vivi chuckled and tied her hair back as she turned around. Let's go back. To Alia Barna. Quack! Some time had passed, Luffy and the rest finally broke free from the Marines' pursuit and they all laid on the railings while sighing. Zoro and Lucas sighed as they looked at them looking so lonely without Vivi. Well, don't be too down. I'm sure our paths will cross again in the sea someday. More importantly, I think you should focus on the stowaway in the ship. Lucas shook his head and resumed a serious expression. Stowaway? Just as they were about to ask, the door leading to the cabins opened up and revealed a familiar black-haired beauty. At last we're out to sea, good work. As soon as they saw her, they all sprung into action. Zoro grabbed his swords, Sanji was being his usual pervert self, Nami, Usopp, and Chopper all began to panic. Only Luffy and Lucas were not as excited. What? It's you! You're not dead? Don't point these dangerous things at me. Didn't I tell you that before? Hands! Robin Simple smiled and swung her hands, summoning a hand on Nami and Zoro as she swiftly slapped their weapons away. Since when did you board this ship? I was here the whole time in the cabin, reading a book and taking a bath. These clothes are yours? Lend them to me. Nami was pissed and immediately retorted at her, but Robin paid her no mind. Lucas. Hmm? You didn't forget what you said, did you? Huh? Lucas blanked out. What was going on? This didn't seem quite right from the original story? Ah! Hey, Lucas! What did you say to this beautiful lady? Sanji immediately freaked out and grabbed his collar as he shook him. Hey! I didn't say anything. No, I remember clearly, you better, take responsibility. Hearing this, Sanji began choking Lucas and shaking him even harder. Luffy glared at her with an annoyed look. You're really weird, what do you want? Let me join your crew. Yeah. Chapter 7, The Island in the Sky Well, it was Luffy who convinced me to live even when I wanted to die, but it is still partially your fault, Lucas. How am I still at fault? Lucas can only swear in his mind. I have nowhere else to go. So let me stay on this ship. Oh, it's like that, there's nothing I can do. It's okay. Luffy! Shishishi! Don't worry! She's not as bad as you all think. Luffy's word ended the conversation. It was clear that he won't care for any objections. Everyone else looked at each other before sighing and simply accepted their captain's decision. While Luffy and Chopper played with the hand that sprouted on the deck, Usopp wasn't convinced and interviewed Robin. I began as an archaeologist at the age of eight. Archaeologist? It's my family's tradition. Then I had a bounty put on my head. So for the next twenty years I was chased by the government. Being just a child, I couldn't survive out on the sea alone, that's why I've been with various villains protecting myself. That's why I'm good at certain operations. Hmm, you seem pretty confident. What kind of operations? Assassination. Robin smiled sweetly as if the word she said was similar to saying I love you. Usopp's face went pale and teary-eyed. Luffy! According to my investigation, I came to the conclusion this woman is too dangerous. Though Usopp yelled, Luffy didn't bother listening at all and was busy playing and laughing at the hands on the deck. Are you guys listening? Really, they are useless. At the top of the stairs, Nami spoke with a cautious tone. I still remember you used to be the vice president of an evil organization. You were Crocodile's partner. You can fool Luffy, or that Lucas, but you won't fool me. If I see anything suspicious, I'll get rid of you. Hee <laughs> hee, okay, I'll remember that. Robin acted as if she didn't care and simply giggled. Suddenly, she brought out a small bag that jingled as it landed on the table. In that case, I'll keep these jewels for myself. 
Wah! I really like you, miss. Hey! The sudden 180-degree turn of Nami caused Usopp and Zoro to be dumbfounded. Luca's face twitched when he saw this as well. Then, Sanji appeared from the kitchen. His whole body swayed as he twisted and twirled on the deck while holding onto a large tray of food. Ah, it's love. Flowing love, I am nothing but a blackened log drifting on the current of the river. Struck by lightning commanded by you, which sent me into a river, ever flowing down a waterfall. Here is a snack. Oh, thank you. Once again, the three watching were dumbfounded. It seems we are the castle. Those guys really need someone to take care of them. Usopp had just said a manly thing when Luffy called him. When he turned, he saw Luffy with two hands sprouting from his head. Chopper! PFT Dash! Soon, he was laughing and playing along with Luffy and Chopper. Zoro's face blackened at that. This is not that bad. Are they always this cheerful? Yeah, they're always like that. Really? Robin let out a genuine smile. One she had thought to have forgotten to make since a long time ago. Still, Zoro didn't let his guard down at all. Lucas smiled wryly and patted on Zoro. Just let it be. In any case, having an archaeologist on board is necessary. Plus, she can fight well so it would be a nice addition to the team. It's enough to keep a close eye on her if needed. Zoro shrugged and went back to train. Right, Zoro, are you interested in getting even stronger? Hmm? Issy, I was reading something interesting back in the royal castle a while ago. Just as Lucas was about to explain, suddenly, the sky felt a bit dark. H.M.? Is it raining? It's not rain. Is it hail? No, something is falling from, huh? They say that everything that humans can imagine is a possibility in reality. This was said by physicist Willie Karen. But as they look at the scene in front of them, many cannot believe their own eyes. Even Lucas who had transported to this One Piece world and knew this would happen still can't quite believe it when he saw it with his own eyes. Above them, a huge galleon which was tenfold the size of Going Merry was falling from the sky upside down. Boom! The impact and ways it brought to the sea caused their little ship to rock violently. Wait uh! Everyone grab hold of the ship! What? What's going on? It's a dream! It must be a nightmare. Nightmare! What a relief! There's still more falling. Be on guard everyone! Sanji shouted with a pale face. Turn around! Turn around! How can we do that with these waves? Lucas felt his power and tried to calm the surging waves. I'll calm the sea as much as possible. Zoro! Stir the ship! Sanji! Luffy! Kick those debris that are still falling from the sky! Sanji and Luffy desperately kicked off the debris falling from the sky while Zoro attempted to stir the ship away. After some lively shouts and desperate moves, the sea finally returned to its original calm state. Everyone sighed in relief seeing as there's no more pieces falling from the sky. Why did a ship fall from the sky? Too weird. There's nothing up there. Luffy and Rest let out a cold sweat as they looked up in the sky in wonder. Wadash! Nami shouted. What's wrong, Nami? What do we do now? The log pose. It's broken. It's pointing up and not even moving around. Hearing this, Robin was surprised. That's not right. There's another magnetic field. How? It's changing the direction of the post. If it's pointing up, it means it must have locked onto a sky island. Lucas finished her words and looked up in amazement as well. Finally, I get to see a real floating island. He thought as he looked forward to seeing an island in the sky. Meanwhile, everyone else was shocked by what they heard. Sky Island. What is that? Can an island really float? But there's nothing that looks like an island. They all looked up and only saw the clear blue sky. Well, 
I've only read about them in the royal castle before. I didn't know the specifics. Regarding this, maybe Robin knows more. Hmm, rather than an island, it's more like a floating sea. Sea! That's even more confusing. Nami and Sanji were confused but Luffy and Usopp had sparkling eyes instead. Is there really an island floating on top of a floating sea? All right, let's go. Everyone, up where we go. Full speed ahead. Robin covered his mouth since he was getting too loud and was spouting nonsense. It's impossible for a ship to go up, Captain. To tell the truth, I've never seen a sky island. I don't know much about them. That's right. It's impossible. Floating islands and floating seas. The laud pose is just broken, that's it. Nami panicked. As the navigator, if the laud pose is broken, they won't be able to move forward. Lucas shook his head. Nami, what you should worry about now is not the laud pose, but how to get up there. Robin nodded as well. No matter how many times this ship is in a strange situation, whatever danger we find along the way, the one thing that we can count on is the log pose. It's a rule in this sea. No matter where the log pose points to, there will be an island there. Lucas concluded. Everyone looked at each other and had no choice but to accept it. At this time, Luffy spoke. Why is a floating island and a floating sea so hard to believe? Even Lucas is from another world. That's a whole different world. With different meats. He has a point, also, does he really need to stress out that meat part at the end? Zoro's eyes widened as well. You're right. They have different alcohols there as well. That's what you find surprising, Oi. Robin was the only one who heard this for the first time and was visible shocked. Another world? What is this about? Ah, you're right. Come to think of it, there's been a lot going on with Vivi, Crocodile, and Alabasta that this whole other world thing just went over our heads. Nami sighed and pressed her palm on her forehead. Usopp's eyes started shining. Hey! Hey! Lucas! In your world, is there like a robot? Robot! Lucas! You have a robot. Robot! Luffy, Usopp, and Chopper's eyes started to shine. It's as if they all had completely forgotten about the huge ship falling from the sky. Lucas sighed and thought it may be fine to let them relax for now. Soon, they will be facing Inel too. He thought for a while then took out his phone. I don't have a robot, but I do have this Gundam back at home, let me just find the picture. Oh, here it is. When Lucas showed the picture to Luffy and them, their eyes seemed to turn into stars and raise the phone up high as if to worship it. Gundam. Robot. It has wings. Seeing the trio act like that, everyone else could only smile wryly. Curious, Robin took the phone and asked. What is this, black box? Ah, that's a smartphone. In my world, everyone has it. We usually use it to contact each other, take pictures, videos, or play games. I see, so it's like a den den mushy then? Dead dead mushy then, Lucas thought this phrase sounded funny and couldn't help but repeat it in his head. Aware that his thoughts are getting sidetracked, he cleared his throat and nodded. Yeah, basically. Interesting, these, pictures too. They are of your world? Yes. It's true, I don't recognize all these, architectural structures, and techniques. Either you came from an extremely secluded island detached from the rest of the world, or you really did come from another world. Hearing her say that, everyone looked at Lucas curiously. In truth, the idea of there being another world is still completely foreign to them and they didn't know what to think of it. Still, Lucas is here, that phone thing is here too. They have no choice but to believe in such a thing. Well, just as Luffy said. I can exist here means that something like a sky island must be possible as well. Lucas only smiled and looked up, seemingly looking for the island in the sky. Nami was silent as she had another question in her mind. Don't you want to go back? To your home world? I do, but I don't know how. 
That's why I'm here. Figured I might as well search for the way back while accompanying you. Who knows, maybe the way back is in the final island where One Piece is. Or maybe it's written in one of those pwn glyphs. I truly do want to go back. I still have my family there after all. But I also wanted to see this story end, no matter what. Luffy laughed as he declared. Shi 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 shi. Don't worry. I'll get you to the final island. After all, I'm gonna be the Pirate King. Heh, I will take you up on your words, Pirate King. Lucas grinned and bumped fists with Luffy. After some time, Robin had Sanji bring together the pieces of debris that fell on the ship and a coffin with a skeleton inside as well in hopes of figuring out the history behind the ship and why it fell. It may also lead to a way to go to the Sky Island. While Robin does her thing, Zoro came to Lucas. Hey! Earlier, before that thing fell, you were saying something about getting stronger? H.M.? Ah, that's right. Lucas looked at Robin and the rest and figured they would take some time. The two moved to another corner in the ship as he began to explain. The library in the royal castle back in Alabasta is really something. I managed to obtain information that is not known to a majority of the people. I know that history and stuff bores you so I'll quickly get to the chase. The truth is, Lucas never went to the library before but figured it would be a good excuse to the knowledge that he knows. After all, Alabasta is still part of the world government and houses information regarding Pluto, they are bound to have this information as well so it wouldn't be too suspicious. You are aware that there are two parts of the Grand Line, correct? Un, they are divided by this thing called Red Line in the middle. Back then, we had to go through the reverse mountain to start our voyage in the Grand Line. That's right. Right now, we are in the first half of the Grand Line. In the second half, people call it the New World. Because the level of power in that half is largely different from the first half. H.M.? Is it so different? Lucas nodded. In the New World, there seems to be a unique power called Hockey. One can say that you can only be considered strong if you have this power. Hockey? Zoro was confused, it was the first time he heard of this. There are two types of hockey. Armament hockey, and observation hockey. Lucas proceeded with the explanation. Everyone has hockey in them, they just don't know how to use it. Simply put, armament hockey covers your body or weapon with an invisible armor, causing it to power up significantly. However, the most important aspect of this type of hockey is that it can also hurt specific devil fruit users. You mean? Right. Just like how you can't punch Luffy since he's made of rubber. If you coat your arm with armament hockey, it will still hurt him. The same for Logia users like Crocodile who can turn into sand. In fact, he probably knows this which was why he is terrorizing the first half instead of going to the new world. Zoro nodded and pondered on this power. Truthfully, he never felt so powerless whenever he's facing those special devil fruit users. He always thought that no matter how hard he trains in his sword, he will never be able to cut down people like Crocodile. Now, it seems there is this power that he can use. If he can use it, he will definitely be many folds stronger than before. You mentioned another type of hockey? The Observation Hockey. This is sort of like the sixth sense. Simply put, it allows you to see even with your eyes closed. They say that high level of attainment in this power allows you to even see a few seconds into the future. I see. That is certainly troublesome. Un, I figured telling everyone else as well but... Lucas looked at the side and saw that they were still busy with investigating. Even Luffy and Usopp were exploring the fallen ship. Well, I don't think they'll listen for now. To these guys, especially to Luffy, it's best if they see it for themselves first before believing it. You're right. I told you since I wanted you to keep an eye out for these strange powers as well. They only say that most people in the New World knows this power but never said that no one in this half will have it. Anyway, truth be told, I still have no idea how to train these two powers. Though I have a bit of an idea in the observation hockey, can you help me out? Zoro nodded. Just then, 
Luffy boarded the ship again and showed a piece of paper to everyone. Hey everyone! Look what I got! I found something really cool! The paper looked old and tattered, but you can still make out the letters written on it. Skypea. A map of Sky Island. Skypea, does this mean there really is an island up there? Seeing as they were about to get all riled up again, Lucas gave a wry smile and turned back to Zoro. Guess we'll continue this some other time. After some discussion, it seems Nami decided to salvage the sunk ship to get more clues on the Sky Island. Usopp had made an impromptu diving suit with barrels and a tube at the top connecting to the surface. Are you sure this is going to work? Nami! I will find the thing that will bring us up to the sky. Lucas looked at Luffy, Zoro, and Sanji wearing the barrels with worry. Honestly, it feels like it will break apart easily. How about I head down with them instead? I'll just create an air bubble or something. It's fine, leave them be. More importantly, if they all die, at least there's someone strong enough left to defend us. All right, sink him, Chopper. Chapter 8, Heaven Piercer Just as the trio was sinking down the ocean, a huge ship arrived near them as well. At the deck, loud voices could be heard. Is this the location of the sunken ship? Aye, aye, sir. Boss! Hearing this, Lucas froze. Right, he forgot that these people would show up here. Salvaging King Masara. Current bounty, 23 million belly. Of all times, why must it be now that these weirdos come? Hey, what are you guys doing here? This here is my territory. Territory? That's right, every sunken ship around here is mine. You didn't mess with my stuff, right? Masaira said in a serious tone, but for some reason, Nami and the rest can't take him seriously at all. Looks like he wants to salvage it too. Hmm, that's what he said. So what? This is our chance. Stop blabbering. Answer my question now. Seeing as they were ignoring him, Masaira squealed loudly like a monkey. Sorry, can I ask you a question? Nami didn't care and asked instead. You have something to ask. All right, go ahead. Where did you come from and are you going to scrape a ship up here? Scrape? Hey, do I look like a complete monkey? Like a monkey? Like a real man. Do you really think so? Nami was dumbfounded. H huh? But I didn't. Ha ha ha, thanks for noticing. So, are you guys here to salvage? Of course I'm here to salvage it. I'm a man who will salvage every single ship that sinks. I don't care how wide or long the ship is, there isn't a single ship we can't salvage. Masara proudly exclaimed. So, can we watch how you do it? Huh? Ah, I see. You guys have never seen it done before. All right, just watch how we do it. Nami and Usopp sighed in relief when they heard that. It seems that this weird guy was reasonable to speak with. However, before they sighed, something came up. Boss! Big trouble! Our crew that went under with the hook. Was it a sea monster? No, it seems he was punched by someone. What? Is someone else down there? Nami and Usopp both let out a cold sweat. Of course, they know who the culprit was and it was obvious as well. So, hey you! Masaira pointed at them immediately, causing the two to jump back half a step. Underwater, it looks like there is someone down there. Be careful. Luckily, he's an idiot. Secure the hook. Begin salvaging. Suddenly, Masaira started waving at Nami and the rest. As Nami and Usopp didn't want to look suspicious as they pump air to Luffy and them, they could only wave back at Masaira awkwardly. Masaira didn't notice at all and turned back to his men. Hey, listen up crew, just pretend that those people are pumpkins. Just because there is someone watching don't hijijiji. His lips started to tremble then turned to a weird grin. Don't be so nervous alright. Yeah. Lucas' face twitched. He didn't want to watch this any longer so he went back to the cabin. 
might as well continue to train while these guys goof off. As Lucas continued to train, he could hear several exclaims from outside and the swaying of the ship. When he looked out the window, he saw a huge turtle the size of an island. After being dumbfounded for a while, he smiled wryly. Truly the world of one piece, seeing it with my own eyes, is totally unbelievable. There seemed to be some wreckage of a ship in its mouth, but Lucas didn't care. He knew that Luffy and the rest are safe anyway. But what he didn't expect was that his presence in the ship made things different. He may not care about it, but the others cared about it greatly. Suddenly, the door was pushed open and Nami jumped to his embrace. Wah! Lucas! Luffy and the others are dead. Save me! Right now, Lucas was topless as he was training and Nami sticking so close to him caused some reactions to his body. Nami felt it too as she blushed but she was still too scared of the giant turtle to let go. For a while, they were stuck in awkward silence. Lucas sighed and forced himself to calm down as he placed his hand on Nami's back to soothe her. It's all right, Nami. Luffy and them are tough. Even Crocodile can't beat them, how can this giant turtle do so? Ah, why you're right. Nami finally let go and looked down. Seeing her line of sight, Lucas blushed and hurriedly turned around. Lucas, that. Nami was about to speak when suddenly, the skies darkened and they heard something crash on the deck. Hi Dash! Still a bit afraid of the huge turtle outside, thinking that their ship was also just eaten, Nami shrieked and clung back to Lucas. What's worse was that she hugged him on the waist this time as her legs gave out in fright. With her face buried on Lucas' stomach, her chest area was naturally touching Lucas' lower area. Wah! Lucas! We're going to die. We're going to die. Ah! And Nami! Stop that! Quickly get off me! Lucas blushed in shame. Nami, Luffy, and them are probably back already. Stop panicking! Look, aren't we still fine? You you you! Nami finally opened her eyes and looked around curiously. Sure enough, even though it's dark outside, they were indeed still alive. Did we get eaten by that turtle? Are we in its stomach now? I say, Nami, your imagination is too much. Why don't we go out and see? Okay, but... Lucas sighed when he finally convinced Nami to get out. Still, Nami looked down again and blushed. She looked back at Lucas with a teasing look. Heh, can you even go out? This is your fault. F fine, stay behind me then, I'll cover you. Nami wasn't used to this reaction. Though she knows that men would tend to show such reaction in their bodies, her crewmates are all either blockheads, idiots, or an excessive pervert. She is normally quite bold and would not mind showing off her skin from time to time, but Lucas, normal, reaction had put her in a tough spot. But she is still Nami after all, so she spoke. You still owe me 100,000 belly from the bathhouse for peeking. This time too, that will be another 100,000. Hey! But I didn't even do anything. You were the one who approached me. Lucas grumbled and remembered a scam from his world where a person would pretend to get hit by a slow-moving car and lie on the ground so that when the driver gets out, he would ask for compensation. He had seen such videos on the internet and laughed at how stupid those guys are. As if anyone would fall for such a trick. But here is Nami, attempting the same thing but only with her body. Her very sexy and soft body. She would really do anything for money, huh? Wait. Do anything? Lucas' thoughts kept overflowing with dirty ideas. No good, I should quickly raise some money. With my knowledge of the other world, I would rake in millions of belly and then. Lucas quickly shook away his impure thoughts. If he continued to think about it more, he was afraid that he would really tempt himself. Nami pouted and turned around. Humph, since this is your first time using my services, I will let you go free. At this point, Lucas wasn't relieved at all. He was frustrated. Damn it, if it was going to be free then he should have done more. Nami knew what he was thinking and laughed slyly as she stuck her tongue out. No doubt, 
she was thinking, these men are so easy to handle. Lucas sighed. The feeling of being teased and cheated had already calmed him down. There was no need to hide behind Nami anymore so they left the cabin and came out. When they came out, they saw Luffy and Masaira arguing with each other but they noticed something behind them. It was large shadow silhouettes hidden behind the misty clouds. Everyone froze. Masaira and Luffy no longer dared to fight as they looked at the towering figures in fright. Only Lucas had a somewhat surprised expression as if he wasn't frightened at all. Nami, who was standing beside him, froze up and he could see her body shaking. Lucas thought it was a good opportunity for payback and looked cool so he held her hand. Nami noticed his hand and gripped it tightly. She looked at Lucas with tears appearing at the corner of her eyes and her lips were pursed as if she was hesitating or deciding on something. Finally, she opened her mouth to speak but... Lucas, I... Nami, whatever happens, remember that I am here. W what? Lucas! It was a pity that Lucas didn't notice her intentions at all. Lucas let go of her hand and sprinted to the deck just as the colossal shadow figure raised his spear to strike. With Nami's shout, the others also snapped out of it and quickly tried to stop Lucas from charging but they are a step too late. Lucas ran and jumped off the ship, seemingly facing the colossal figure on his own. He controlled the water to push himself upwards even further. Lucas! Luffy and the rest shouted as Lucas was about to be struck by the spear. With a punch, Lucas secretly manipulated the water molecules in the cloud to tear a hole in the sky. Heaven Piercer! Lucas only thought of the name and didn't shout it as he felt it would be too much. Also, this move had no practical use at all. Other than clearing the weather for sunbathing, there was no use to it in a fight. On the ship, Luffy and the rest watched on as the huge towering figure's chest suddenly gained a hole and dissipated. Their jaws dropped to the ground. Robin was the first to snap out of it and once she saw Lucas fall from the sky, she swung her hands and summoned a line of hands that stretched all the way to Lucas, pulling him to the ship. She made more hands to catch his fall and after seeing him safe, she sighed. As everyone looked down at him with dumbfounded faces, Lucas noticed something and grinned. He raised his hand up to the sky and pointed. Luffy! There it is! The island in the sky! Only now did they all look back up again and saw an island. It was faint, and the sun behind it was slightly making it unrecognizable, but the silhouette is certainly like an island. Usopp used his goggles and zoomed in. Though it can't zoom so far up, he was still able to see more than the others. Aye, it's true! There's trees and buildings. We're too far away, but it's there. It's really there. Everyone was even more shocked. They looked back at Lucas curiously. Knowing their thoughts, Lucas smiled as he explained. Well, when I was a kid, there's this show that I would watch often. It was just a simple shadow puppet show where they hide behind a thin fabric and shine a light behind them, showing their shadows on the fabric. This incident reminded me of that so I wanted to take a closer look. Sure enough, when I got close, I found that these giants aren't really giants. Just shadows. Lucas continued to explain. I wondered why it suddenly got dark, and then there's these shadows, so I thought, maybe, just maybe. The Sky Island. We must be under the Sky Island now. And those giant shadows. They're residents of the Sky Island which just happened to be in front of the sun's light. Robin and Nami exclaimed. With this, the others naturally understood as well. Seeing as everyone started to get it, Lucas nodded. Right. Unfortunately, my powers don't work so far away so I had to shorten the distance. As they showed an understanding look, they all sighed, thinking it's good that such huge creatures doesn't exist even in the Grand Line. At the side, Nami was silent. Her fist was trembling slightly. She walked towards Lucas and swung her fist to his head. Ah! Lucas saw it coming and didn't understand why she was angry but knew that it would be bad if he didn't solidify to let her hit him so he can only grit his teeth and accept getting hit. You, idiot! I thought I, we had lost you again. 
You keep pulling off stunts like this and you'd really end up dead. I, uh, don't bother me. Now I have to figure out how to get us up there. After saying that, she angrily slammed the door to her room with a bang. Lucas blinked dumbfoundedly, not knowing what just happened. Only after a while did he seem to understand something and broke into a cold sweat. Damn! Did I overdo it? Looking at the closed door, he sighed and decided to let matters take its course. Inwardly, he couldn't help but curse. First it was Vivi, then Nami, what am I going to do? Sigh, it's too hard being handsome. This must be what Hancock feels like. The author, reading this, felt like punching his own main character. This damn narcissist. Dare to compare yourself to Hancock. The author also stared at this line for over an hour before deciding to leave it here and was too lazy to remove it. Anyway, back to the story, when Luffy learned that the Sky Island was real, his eyes started to shine even brighter. Onwards! To Sky Island. Uh, Luffy. We still don't know how to get there. I can probably shoot us up with the water, but something that far and this big would probably kill me before we would end up in the sky. Don't worry, no matter what happens, remember that I am here. Fuck! Zoro! You were listening. Lucas blushed furiously. Such a cheesy line, Zoro unexpectedly heard it as well. Behind the scenes, the author cheered for Zoro as well. Yeah. Roast that bastard. He dares to take Nami from me. Sky Island. Suddenly, Masaira shouted. Lucas and the rest looked at him oddly. Did he just snap out of it just now? He's too slow in the head. Masaira didn't mind our looks and quickly jumped back to his own ship. Min! Head back to the island quick. It seems as if he's in a hurry. Lucas knows that he wanted to inform Cricket immediately and sighed, wondering if this would also affect the future greatly. Still, it shouldn't be too big of a change. Lucas looked back at Luffy. So, anything you found under there? Lots. Well, I'll go get Nami then. Scratching his head, Lucas walked towards Nami's room and knocked. Nami? What? She's still mad. Erm, Luffy and the rest are about to show the things they got from the ship. There may be some clues there to get to the Sky Island or Treasure's Dash. Bam! Lucas had just completed the word treasure and the door had completely swung open. Caught unawares, his head was hurting from the impact but Nami didn't care about him anymore as she made a beeline to the pile of treasures that Luffy brought. Lucas cursed again in his mind. This money-loving woman. Though Lucas knew that he can get her out of the room by saying the word treasure, he still underestimated Nami and didn't think she would immediately open the door like that. Lucas swore in his heart. Next time, next time I am activating my Logia powers. By the time Lucas came back to the deck, he could see Nami scolding Luffy and the other two. Where's the treasure? All you brought back was trash. And there's not even anything about how we can get to the sky. Luffy ignored Nami and simply played with wearing the rusty armor he found. Zoro shrugged. There was nothing else in it. Yeah, that's true Nami-san. Sanji popped out a smoke with a sigh as he remembered the scattered weapons and skeletons in the ship. That ship had obviously been attacked. Either that or there was some sort of disagreement that caused them to turn on each other. If that's so, then information is even more crucial. Don't you get it? If we went into the sky right now, whatever happened on that sunken ship could happen to us too. Nami is still being as cautious as ever. Frustrated, she stomped on the pile of treasures. Ah! The info we have can mean life and death. Look at this stuff. Rusted swords, foodware, octopus. What I need are things like a diary or sea charters, not this junk. Nami ignored Zoro and Sanji and turned to Luffy. And what's that, Luffy? Armor, to protect me from harm. Ah! The armor is smashed to bits. Angered, Nami had actually destroyed Luffy with a single punch. How was that supposed to protect him from harm? Too scary, 
This Nami. However, it seems that Sanji didn't care at all and presented a shell to Nami. Nami-san, I brought back a beautiful shell for you. I don't want it, you idiot. Nami sighed as she walked back up to the helm. Robin, who was sitting at the side, handed something to Nami. For you. Wah. This is an eternal odd pose. How did you? I stole it from that monkey's ship. Nami was in tears as she held onto the lock post. You, the only one who understands me is you. Seems like you've been putting in a lot of effort. Even Robin pitted her. Lucas smiled wryly and walked over to look at the eternal log pose. Sure enough, the next island they will visit is written on it. His eyes gleamed as he thought of a certain man who they will find on that island. Jaya, will I finally be able to see Blackbeard next? Lucas couldn't wait. Chapter 9, Hockey Chapter 9, Hockey Jaya Nami read the word written on the eternal log pose. It must be their headquarters. Jaya? Are we going there? Luffy asked while eating takoyaki that seemed to come from nowhere. Wait, did they already eat the octopus they found? Lucas can only laugh wryly at how relaxed these guys are. Nami was also angered as she shouted. Shouldn't that be for you to decide? Okay, turn toward Jaya full speed. Luffy was easy to talk to and immediately gave the order as the captain without thinking too much about it. To Jaya! Full speed turn! Though Luffy shouted, the others had no idea where to go. Lucas laughed and added on while looking at the eternal log pose. Turn left. Oh, Chopper, a hand here. Okay. To Jaya! Full speed ahead! Luffy did not mind anyone and continued to shout as if it meant something. Suddenly, Usopp noticed. Ah! Oh. Hey, wait a second, if we just go directly to Jaya, won't the record be overwritten when we're there? In other words, we wouldn't be able to get to the Sky Island. Ah! Oh. Stop moving toward Jaya! Realizing what Usopp said, both Chopper and Luffy panicked and stopped his order. Luffy turned to Nami for an explanation. Hey Nami! What's going on here? Going to Jaya was your decision, right? Yeah, that's right, but I didn't think that the situation would turn out like this. You didn't think, it's your fault then. The log pose has always been like that. Yeah, you're right. Luffy was silent, then nodded. All right. Listen, I'm the captain so I'll decide where we go. I want to go to the Sky Island. Nami shrugged. Sure, how will you get there? The fastest way is to just ask around for info. Usopp also seemed to be thinking. Then, Luffy decided. Right, we can ask around in Jaya. Well then, head for Jaya. All right. To Jaya, full speed. Hey! We just went back to where we were. Seeing them, Lucas laughed. These guys, are they doing stand-up comedy or what? Robin finally calmed them down by suggesting that they can just leave before the record is set. In the meantime, they can ask around the island. All right, me mateys. Let's go. To the kingdom of meat. Don't daydream. Lucas laughed again. This Luffy sure has wild imaginations. As the ship began to travel to Jaya, Lucas finally had some time to train with Zoro. Zoro also remembered what Lucas told him and came to look for him. You mentioned earlier about training that observation hockey thing? And in, the idea is being able to see without seeing and predicting the opponent's attack ahead of time. I have some ideas on how this may be trained. Good, let's get to it. Lucas nodded and took out a piece of cloth and covered his eyes. Basically, one side will be hitting, the other side will be dodging or receiving while blindfolded. Have you tried this before? Yeah, but it's a bit annoying and cumbersome. Well, I'll start first. Zoro, just use one sword for now. Lucas smiled and picked up a piece of wood and held it forwards, readying for Zoro's attack. Here goes. With the blindfold, 
Lucas was unable to see so he used his other senses. Mainly his hearing and touch. Hearing a brush of wind above him, Lucas held the wooden stick horizontally and parried the attack. Ah, I got it right. Well, I slowed down for you. Next. Zoro began to quicken his pace. Though Lucas could parry some of his strikes, he was unable to dodge or defend most of the time. It can't be helped. Prior to this, Lucas doesn't even have any fighting experience. The two of them decided to switch per hour. When the hour was almost over, Lucas felt a warm sensation flow through his body again like before. Suddenly, he felt like he can see again. Confused, Lucas touched his face and found that the blindfold is still there. Before he can think of anything else, Zoro's swords flashed and were about to strike him. Wait, swords! Damn! I said use one sword first. Why are you using two? Huh, you know? Zoro didn't strike his swords at the same time so as to create an illusion that he was only using one sword. But he didn't expect that Lucas would figure it out. Again, one last time. You can use both. I won't parry, just dodge. Lucas felt something so he dropped the wooden stick and stood there calmly. Zoro was silent before lunging towards Lucas. However, it was as if Lucas already knew where he would attack, his body swayed left and right, dodging his strikes by a hair's breadth. Zoro grimaced and took out his third sword. Oni, Giri. As he launched his signature move, Lucas picked up the wooden stick again and extended it forwards, accurately hitting on the meeting point of all three swords. Lucas actually stopped his swords. While Zoro was still shocked, Lucas grinned and removed his blindfold. So this is hockey, what a fascinating feeling. It was absurd. To think that he had already awakened observation hockey in just an hour of training, even Luffy had spent several months to master it. Zoro, watching Lucas stop his swords, trembled in excitement. This is it. If he can have this power as well, his swordsmanship would go through leaps and bounds. He can still get even stronger. It's my turn. Un, Zoro, let's change the times. From now on, your turn would be five hours while I would have an hour. No need. I'll master this fast. It's not as easy as it looks like. Lucas smiled wryly, he knew what Zoro was thinking. Really? Looked pretty easy to me. Well, just try it then. Seeing Zoro so stubborn, Lucas can only give in and accompany him to train. He wasn't like Zoro who just simply swung wildly earlier and even cheated by adding another sword. Instead, he was patient and more like a teacher. Memorize this sound and the feeling. I'll do ten strikes overhead at different speeds. Just get to it. Since Lucas had said so beforehand, Zoro was able to parry the strikes easily but was still not used to the varying speeds of the strike. After ten strikes, Lucas swung to the left this time. Then the right, diagonal, front, and back. Only after completing this set that he began to wildly hit Zoro. In truth, Lucas wanted to continue those simple and basic strikes, but he knows Zoro, he's stubborn and didn't have the patience for something so repetitive and boring. Zoro can repeatedly do push-ups or other exercises himself, but this was different. He saw Lucas achieve it immediately so he wanted to do so fast as well. In terms of sword sense, Zoro was better than Lucas. And with the warm-up he gave him before, Lucas was only able to land a handful of strikes. But this is only due to experience. Zoro was still unable to sense the mysterious power of hockey. You're used to fighting with swords, but this has also limited your own vision. Let's step it up a notch. Lucas thinks that Zoro is relying heavily on his experience with swords to judge where the strike would be, but this makes him vulnerable to anything else. Else, with his talent, he would have already mastered hockey even before the two-year time skip. Only when he was so badly bruised and fought against those crazy monkeys at Hawkeye's Island for nearly two years did he master it. That's why, Lucas decided to stop using weapons and instead, use his power. He controlled the water outside and shot it towards Zoro. Completely caught unawares, his whole body was drenched. 
Zoro's face twitched and he took off his blindfold angrily. What was that for? What? You were the one who used two swords when I only said one. Also, you can't just get used to swords. You need to predict the unexpected. How the hell are you supposed to predict the unexpected? Actually, even Lucas wasn't sure how the hockey training is supposed to be. That's what we're learning here. Sigh, never mind. You said that it's easy so I thought you can do it faster, it seems I overestimated. Hearing that, Zoro's face twitched again and picked the blindfold once again. Come at me with all you got you bastard. You said it. Lucas grinned and began attacking Zoro with water pillars. At the side, Luffy and the rest looked at them curiously. What are you guys doing? H.M.? Oh, we're playing a game. After thinking for a bit, Lucas decided to fool Luffy. Game? Looks fun. Let me join. Really? This is a hard game you know you need to have a blindfold and I'll be attacking you with seawater. You'd lose immediately. What's that? You dare make fun of your captain. You sop. Get me a blindfold. Lucas showed another grin as he tricked Luffy into training observation hockey. He saw Sanji sneer and laugh at Zoro getting drenched. Zoro, you lasted five minutes now with me attacking from all sides, that's good, I think no one can do any better. When Sanji heard that, he stopped laughing and tossed his cigarette. Oi! Get me a blindfold too. I'll definitely last longer than this moss head. Heh, someone like you wouldn't last a second, curly brows. Bastard. I'll show you. As the two of them started to fight while dodging and defending from the water pillars while blindfolded, Luffy was busy getting hit by the water, then being weak, then unable to dodge the next, then repeat. Lucas knew that Luffy's an idiot and he won't get it immediately so he just let him continue at his own pace. Nami saw Lucas grin while torturing the three strongest members of their crew and cold sweat appeared on her temple, it was unknown what she was imagining. Meanwhile, Robin looked at Lucas curiously, seemingly understanding something. The training slash game slash torture continued on for an hour. At this moment, Zoro seemed to have felt something and unconsciously moved his head to the side, dodging the water pillar in the nick of time. Lucas' eyes gleamed as well as he felt that Zoro's dodge at that time was different from before. He was about to test the waters more but then Sanji's leg kicked over to Zoro. Zoro, who was still trying to recall that feeling before, was caught unprepared by Sanji's kick and was struck. Damn cook! Pissed, he took off his blindfold and began to hit Sanji. Seeing the two of them begin fighting again, Lucas was dumbfounded. Did he imagine it? Lucas began to regret dragging Sanji into this. Both Zoro and Sanji were knocked out by each other as they fell. Lucas turned to look at Luffy who was the only one left standing, though he looked even weaker than the other two, but he was still standing. Figuring it was a good time to end the training, Lucas cleared his throat and spoke to Luffy. Well, congrats Captain. You won. Ah. Uh, I won. Woohoo. Luffy took off his blindfold and celebrated, completely not reading the mood. He went over to Zoro and Sanji who were both exhausted and started to make stupid faces on them. Both pissed, they dragged Luffy and began their three-way brawl. Lucas just ignored them and walked over to Nami who was busy relaxing at the deck. He saw a glass of orange juice at her side and took a sip. Who really makes me thirsty? The next moment, he saw an orange-haired demon raise her fist and smacked his head. Lucas rolled on the ground while clutching his head painfully. Damn it! I really will turn to water next time. This demon! You're lucky I don't turn into water and sneak into your bath. Wait a sec. This seems to be a good idea. While Lucas was thinking about this seriously, Nami saw that he was still not getting up and thought he was still sulking. She knew that if he wanted, her fists would just go through him. But Lucas still respects her and didn't want to make things harder between them so he still solidified even if he knew he would be hurt. Nami sighed in her heart and spoke softly. Does it hurt? Huh? Oh, no, not much really. 
I'm fine. Surprised at her sudden question and behavior, Lucas stuttered a bit before answering. Hmph, that's what you get for, hey. Your nose is bleeding. Ah. Uh. Lucas let out a confused sound and touched his nose. Sure enough, there was blood flowing out. But this wasn't because Nami hit him, instead, this is due to blood rushing to his head as he kept of all sorts of things earlier. Fully aware of his own thoughts, Lucas blushed and quickly wiped off the blood. Ah, T this is, uh, I am probably too fatigued from earlier, hence my body is weak. Yep, that's it. You. Nami was about to say something when Lucas jumped off the ship in a desperate attempt on washing the blood off. Stupefied, Nami's fist clenched and glared at Lucas hatefully. In the sea, Lucas sighed in his mind and wondered what to do with Nami. He is a selfish guy, he may like Nami but he also likes Vivi and Robin and a bunch of One Piece girls. It can't be helped, who told Oda to draw them all so sexily. Of course, with the exception of other characters like Lola or Big Mom. Actually, Big Mom can be considered as the one true harem queen. She has a bunch of sons and daughters from different races. This is the dream of all men. And she accomplished it as a woman. It's too bad she looks like an old witch hag now, maybe she was hot back in the day, but definitely not anymore. Well, that three-eyed daughter of hers is pretty but Lucas thinks her character is a bit annoying. Anyway, after some reflecting and meditating under the sea, Lucas came back up to the deck cautiously. Looking around, he didn't see Nami but saw Robin sitting at the side. Nami's back in the room? Oh, you're back. Yes, she just went back and slammed on her door while cursing about a pervert. Robin is as frank as ever. With another sigh, Lucas leaned on the rails and looked at the sky, wondering how he suddenly became a pervert in her eyes when he hasn't even done anything to her yet. Robin just watched him with her ever-curious eyes. Lucas noticed her looking and felt weird. She had a look as if he's looking at an animal inside the zoo. What? Nothing. I'm just very curious about you. Heh, careful there. You might just fall in love with me. Lucas laughed jokingly but Robin only smiled slyly. Oh, what if I did fall in love? Are you going to stop pursuing Nami? You know, with my powers, I have hundreds of ways to make you feel satisfied. Hearing Robin's soft and seductive talk, Lucas froze before laughing weakly. Ha, 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 I bet you do, uh, good talk. Lucas felt that it would be bad to continue this conversation so he quickly fled. While looking at the fleeing Lucas, Robin giggled and turned to a corner of the ship. You can come out now, Nami. Chapter 10, Big Changes Nami came out from the corner and looked at the direction Lucas left with a complicated expression. Hmph, such a cowardly pervert. Robin chuckled at that. Actually, I quite like him already. He's very interesting. Robin smiled slyly. Hearing that, Nami was as if a cat whose tail was stepped on. You can't. Oh? Nami blushed when she realized she was too anxious. But Robin didn't mind. Instead, she raised up four fingers. Shall we make a bet? After four islands, if I still can't make him fall for me, I will not bother the two of you anymore. W. Why should I make a bet with you? Oh, so you want to share then? No! Nami blushed again. But this time, she glared at Robin with fire burning in her eyes. This vixen dares to steal from me. Wait, since when was Lucas mine? It's not like I, but it's annoying if he and this vixen get together and be flirty all the time. Though Nami had to admit that she lacks in certain areas when compared to Robin, she didn't want to lose out at all. <laughs> Fine. But a bet is only a bet when both wages are equal. If I lose, I will also not mind you both. Fufu, shall the best woman win? Oh, it's on. With a final glare, Nami left Robin alone and went to find Lucas. Looking at Nami leaving as well, Robin let out a soft sigh and looked back to the ocean as she muttered. For more islands, by that time, who knows if I would still be here. 
this silly girl. Back on the front of the deck, Lucas was completely unaware about the bet that seemed to decide his love life. If he was better at using his observation hockey, he might have known something, but as he is now, he still hasn't grasped the full use of it. At the front, Lucas saw Usopp and Chopper looking into the distance with Usopp looking through his binoculars. Still can't see it, Usopp? I haven't seen it yet. Zoro also walked towards them after finishing up his training. It shouldn't be so far away, right? That monkey man said that the area back there was his territory. Seeing as Nami isn't here, Lucas added while looking at the sky. The weather has been steady for a while. We are probably in Jaya's weather area. Luffy lay down on top of going Mary's head comfortably. Jaya must be a spring island. So warm, feels good. Chopper looked to the sky and saw seagulls flying freely. Spring is such a good season. Those seagulls seem to be feeling well too. Suddenly, the seagulls that Chopper mentioned landed on the deck with blood spilling out of them. Ah! Oh, they were shot. Ooh, barbecue material. What, shot? I didn't hear any gunshots. Chopper was frightened, but Luffy and Usopp didn't believe him. As if to prove his point, Chopper took out a pair of tweezers and took out a bullet from a seagull's body. Look, a bullet! Judging from the angle of descent, it was fired from the direction in front of the ship. At this time, Nami finally appeared and heard their conversation. She looked to the front, but didn't see even a hint of an island. Shooting from an island that we can't even see yet? Chopper, that's impossible. But I was watching them. Sanji. Seagull. Luffy didn't care about it at all and simply cared about food. Well, he is a rubber man, he is naturally the one who doesn't care about bullets. Haha, <laughs> if that's true, with what kind of eyesight, using what kind of gun, and what kind of technique does that shooter have? They probably got hit before and just happened to fall down right now. Usopp was still unconvinced, but Lucas knows that Chopper is right. Those seagulls were indeed shot down. This is the work of Blackbeard's crew. Lucas frowned and stepped in front of Nami just in case. He knew that the shooter won't shoot again, but he still wanted to be cautious. Nami saw this little action of his and pouted. She pushed Lucas away and made sure that they were still heading in the right direction. Being pushed away by Nami, Lucas sighed again for the nth time. After making sure the direction is okay, Nami looked at Lucas and was about to say something, but when she turned to look, Robin had unknowingly latched herself to Lucas already. Robin seemed to be asking Lucas about his phone and how to use it. The two of them were also smiling and laughing together. Pissed, Nami came over and snatched Lucas' phone away. Ah. Nami? Stop fooling around and prepare the ship. We are nearly there. But, we can't even see Dash. Lucas froze when he saw the orange-haired demon raising her fist again and hurriedly left to prepare things, though he has no idea what exactly he needed to prepare. Nami glared at Robin again and left for her room as well. Hmph, I shouldn't have agreed to let that vixen stay on this ship. Then, she noticed that she still had Lucas' phone in her hands. After thinking of something, she smiled slyly and tapped on the camera icon on the screen. Lucas had already taught her the ins and outs of the phone and could be considered as experienced already. After opening up the camera app, she proceeded with taking lots of pictures of herself. She wanted to flood his gallery with only herself so Lucas won't look at other girls. Of course, she wouldn't delete pictures that were already there. She wasn't that mean. After about a hundred or so pictures, she wasn't satisfied yet and took another picture of herself with more skin revealed and changed it into the phone's wallpaper and lock screen. Hee hee, let's see if you can still think of other women. Satisfied, she took the phone and was ready to give it back to Lucas. Suddenly, she froze. No good. It's too embarrassing if she directly hands it over to him. After thinking about it, she decided to leave it on the table near Lucas and hid nearby, waiting for his reaction. After some time, Lucas was still doing his work and didn't notice the phone. Nami was already getting impatient. Just get your phone already. As she is thinking this, 
Sanji entered the scene and noticed the phone on the table. H.M.? Ah, this is Lucas' phone? Sanji looked at Lucas who seemed busy at the moment and remembered that his phone was fun to play with, so he decided to open it and play. However, just as he was about to see the lock screen, something struck his head and knocked him unconscious. Nami wasn't satisfied and repeatedly hit Sanji with the chopping board and kicked him a few times. Lucas, who heard the noise, turned around just in time to see this scene. His body shivered. A demon! There's a real demon. Nami's appearance is truly frightening. He didn't know what Sanji did, but he prayed for his soul to hopefully ascend to heaven properly. And Nami, calm down. Sanji doesn't have a bounty yet. Killing him won't give you any rewards. El Lucas, you bastard. Ah, it seems that Sanji was still conscious, but this was all he could utter before finally losing consciousness for good. Once Nami was satisfied, she stopped and glared at Lucas. Lucas felt the killing intent behind her eyes and was confused. Just how did I offend this demon again? Nami didn't mind his reaction. She grabbed his phone, fiddled with it and deleted all the photos of her. As expected, it's too embarrassing after all. Once done, she tossed it back to Lucas and left with a puff. Still confused, Lucas looked at his phone and wondered what Nami did. He opened the phone and found that there were no changes. He thought of something and used an app to recall deleted files. Sure enough, when he recovers the recently deleted images, it was filled with pictures of Nami. She actually took selfies in all sorts of angles, poses, and there's hundreds of them. It's a good thing I didn't tell them I can recover the images, this Nami is really bold. Lucas raised his thumb in approval in his mind and savored the pictures. Especially the one with more skin revealed. Next, he moved them all in a folder named, Treasures, and placed a password. The password is actually Ilovanami. Of course, he wouldn't dare tell this to anyone. This phone is now his sacred treasure which he can worship every night. He looked at Sanji who was bruised all over and unconscious. Sorry, Sanji, thank you for your sacrifice. With that, he left and headed back to the deck as well. On the way, he met Nami again who acted like she didn't do anything and just directly ignored him. At this time, they finally saw the island of Jaya. Hey, hey! It looks like a vacation resort. Usopp was excited while looking at the pleasant city in front of them. A resort? Speed up Mary! Yup, I feel like staying around for a few days there. Nami was also excited and couldn't wait to land. Suddenly, Usopp noticed the ship's dock nearby. Um, those ships at the dock look like pirate ships, am I just worrying too much? Usopp, think. How can a pirate ship openly dock in public place? Ha ha. That's right. Just as they were happily talking, a loud scream was heard. Murderer. What's wrong with this city? Lucas smiled wryly and remembered the original Mongda. The city on the west side of Jaya is a gathering place of chaotic people where there is no law. Here, people attack, sing, and laugh with each other. It's the city of mockery, Mock Town. Upon landing, Luffy and Zoro grinned. Seems like there are all kinds of people here. Looks to me like a fun city. While looking at the two, Nami, Usopp, and Chopper's faces were pale. It just can't be done. It's impossible for those two not to cause trouble. Yeah, this city has enough trouble brewing already. Absolutely impossible. After much deliberation, Nami finally decided to accompany them, hoping that with her presence, there would be less trouble. Lucas looked to the side and found Robin had disappeared as well. As he looked at the others, Lucas also decided to leave quietly. He looked around and found a ship, this must be his ship. Blackbeard, Marshal D, Teach. Lucas wasn't worried about Luffy and the rest. He knew that although they will be insulted, they would be fine. He waited on the ship for some time and finally, the man he was looking for had arrived. Huh? Who are you? Blackbeard asked upon seeing a stranger on his ship. Blackbeard, 
Marshall D. Teach. It's good to see you. I am Lucas, a member of the Straw Hat Pirates. Lucas gave a curt bow. Straw Hat? Ah, you mean that kid, huh? What are you doing on my ship? His eyes narrowed and a faint killing intent could be felt from him. Oh, I am here to kill you. Say ha ha ha. What an interesting brat. Many have tried, yet I am still here. What makes you think you can do it? Lucas just smiled and slowly approached him. Blackbeard just stood there as if he wanted to know what Lucas would do. Unfortunately, that was his mistake. Lucas' hand turned to water and shot out to Blackbeard. Surprised at his ability's nature, Blackbeard tried to step away but was too late. W what is this power? A water devil fruit shouldn't exist. Heh, you think your dark fruit is the only one which can counter devil fruits? Well, just stay still and drown. It's pointless to struggle. Blackbeard's eyes finally showed fear as he was slowly being engulfed in water. Why, why do you want to kill me? Lucas grinned. It's a secret. You, B.A.S., Tard. Unable to even summon his power, Blackbeard's eyes slowly dimmed as he was out of breath. Soon, his heart stopped. Lucas let Blackbeard's body go and was silent. With this, Ace should be safe now, there's no reason why he would get caught and that war would not happen anymore. And Luffy, Luffy wouldn't feel so sad anymore. Blackbeard was supposed to be a tough opponent, but he underestimated Lucas which caused his death. Though there may be unforeseen changes from now on, Lucas still decided that this is for the best. Blackbeard must die. Suddenly, Blackbeard's crew appeared. Seeing the body lying down, they were all angered and charged towards Lucas. Bastard! What did you do? Lucas only looked at them with dead eyes. After killing someone for the first time, his heart was cold and tranquil. He didn't know if this was because it's his nature or if it's also because of that fruit's effect on him. In any case, he doesn't mind killing Blackbeard's crew as well. While pointing his finger at them, high-pressure water shot towards them. Water gun! This is one of the moves that Lucas had come up in his free time. But it wasn't over. The water pierced their bodies but stayed inside. With his control, he burst their bodies open with the water inside. Looking at their dead bodies, Lucas cut off their heads and raided the ship. His total gain was about 500,000 bellies, these Blackbeard pirates at this time are dirt poor. He has no idea what Blackbeard and his crew's bounty is at the moment but still decided to turn it in. There should be a marine office here too. After asking around, he found the marine office and turned in the heads. Lucas has no bounty on himself at the moment and is not classified as a pirate so he intended to make good use to this. Though he thinks that this marine office is quite pointless to be here, look at how chaotic this place is. These marines should be quite corrupted. But after some mild threats here and there, Lucas was able to get their bounties. Total bounties, 878, 556, 000 bellies, it's lesser than he thought. Well, Blackbeard's bounty only increased to 2 billion after the summit war. Also, his crewmates aren't that well known yet as they haven't made their debuts. Together with the money from their ship, Lucas now has 879 million on him. Lucas grinned when he thought of Nami's reaction to this, maybe he can buy her? He quickly shook the thought away and silently prayed in the photos of his goddess in his phone. Wait, that goddess is also Nami. While thinking of such idle thoughts, he left and went back to the ship. As soon as he reached the ship, he heard some yelling. You guys, what's with those wounds? What happened? Nami-san. Are you alright, Nami-san? Ah. Oh. Doc, Doc, Doctor. Doctor. You're the doctor. So go give them some first aid. Usopp saw that Chopper forgot about his own role again then he slapped the back of his head. Lucas smiled wryly and walked towards them. While Chopper was fixing up their wounds, Lucas also used his water's healing capability to heal the two of them. My healing powers don't work great on devil fruit users but it should be enough to stop the bleeding, 
I will count on you to patch Luffy up, Chopper. Leave it to me. At the side, Nami was frustrated. Even if all of you want to let go of the past, I am still angry. What kind of response was that? A real man would pulverize any challenger to dust. Arg! This city is pissing me off. Why didn't you bash it into bits? Just a little while ago, you were saying. That was the past, don't bring it up. If you do, I will beat you to death. Argue the one who just said that you can't let go of the past, oi. Oh, did you guys discover any clues about the Sky Island? Chopper asked, seemingly excited. However, upon hearing the word, something seemed to have triggered inside Nami and looked at Chopper with a black face. Sky Island. I don't care anymore, geez, Sky Island, when I mentioned it, everyone in the bar just laughed. Is everything that I say always so funny? Is it because I said it? What did I do that was so funny? Something seemed to have snapped inside Nami as she was like a mad cat hissing at everyone. Usopp and Chopper were scared that one of them pretended to be dead while the other used his defense point to guard against Nami. Lucas smiled wryly and patted her head. Nami jolted from his touch and was about to hiss at him as well when Lucas showed her a sack. Well, don't be mad. Calm down. Here, this should cheer you up. Confused, Nami calmed down and opened the sack. Instantly, her eyes turned to Belly's. H how much are these? Should be about 879 million, dash. Kaya! I love you so much Lucas. Lucas was shocked. True enough, Nami is really so bold. To just go and hug him like this so tightly in broad daylight with everyone looking at them. Though he can see Saji's eyes burning from jealousy, Lucas ignored him and savored the soft mounds on his chest. Usopp was also shocked and looked at the sack of bellies and asked, Just how did you get these, Lucas? Don't tell me you robbed a bank? H.M.? Well, I don't have any bounty yet and this place seemed to be full of pirates, I just knocked a few of them or so and turned them in. I thought with how beat up the ship is, you could use the money for repairs. Kaya! I love you so much Lucas. Oi! Why, why are you also hugging me Usopp? I'm not into men so get the hell off. Lucas face blacked and immediately kicked Usopp away while still holding Nami. So cruel. Lucas ignored him as well and savored Nami's embrace a bit longer. Hmm, she smell of oranges though. Chapter 11, The Man Who Talks of Dreams It is said that when choices are made, whether good or bad, follow you forever and affect everyone in their path one way or another. With the death of Blackbeard, many changes began to occur. When a devil fruit user dies, their devil fruit returns back to the earth and would reappear once again somewhere in the Grand Line. This was also true in the case of Blackbeard. Upon his death, many days had passed, and a certain island somewhere along the first half of the Grand Line, a young man with white hair was walking unsteadily in the forest. His skinny look and body full of bruises is enough to tell you that this young man had not lived a good life. Often, he is bullied and beaten up. His parents are dead and he has no money to eat. As he was walking in the forest, he saw a strange-looking fruit in front of him and hesitated. He has been looking around for a day now and did not see a hint of food anywhere. Probably, those bullies of his had taken everything already. Just as he was hesitating, his stomach growled again. He no longer cared and took the fruit and ate it. He ignored the weird taste and simply ate his feel. Once he was finished, he felt a strange power emerge from him. Looking at his hands, it suddenly released a black mist and he immediately understood. What he ate was death. He wasn't a person who knew a lot. He didn't know the existence of devil fruits. As such, he could only think of such things. To him, that strange fruit was definitely poisonous. For him not to die means he conquered death. And for him to gain such powers means he now controls death. His mouth twisted into a weird grin. A few hours later, the city that had tormented him was engulfed in darkness. Soon, 
it was no more. Later on, he would venture into the sea and feared by all, as the Black Death. Back to the present, in Jaya. While Lucas was busy embracing Nami, at this time, Robin appeared. H.M.? Sounds like something exciting just occurred? What happened? Ah! Oh, you're back, Robin Chan. Would you like to eat first or take a bath first? Sanji, who was still feeling jealous of Lucas, immediately started his advance on Robin instead. Of course, he was just ignored by Robin. Luffy finally noticed that Robin had left as well and asked, Where did Robin go? I went to buy some clothes. I also tried to find clues about Sky Island along the way. Hearing the word Sky Island again, Nami was about to snap, but Lucas quickly calmed her down by jiggling the sack of bellies. As if charmed by the sound, Nami's eyes turned to bellies again and melted in bliss. Lucas was speechless. Looking at the two of them, Robin was confused but still calm, as if it did not matter to her at all. Lucas remembered what she told him before and let out a cold sweat. Not minding Lucas, Robin walked over to Luffy and handed a piece of paper to him. Ooh! It's a treasure map. It's just an ordinary map. Where is this place? Usopp asked. It's this island. The city on the left is where we are, Mock Town. On the other side, do you see the X mark on the east coast? I heard that a very special person from Jaya lives there. When Robin explained, the two were even more curious. A very special person? His name is Mont Blanc Cricket. He was exiled because he kept talking about his dreams. We should be able to talk about similar interests. Lucas smiled. So you think if there's anyone on this island who would know about Sky Island, it would be him, correct? Exactly. Robin nodded and gave Lucas a smile. Nami saw this and immediately pinched Lucas' waist. Ah. Though it didn't really hurt, Lucas still acted like it did to satisfy this little demon when he remembered what she did with Sanji before. And so the crew began to set sail once again to reach the other side of the island. While sailing, Lucas stayed in the cabin and focused on training his observation hockey. They would go up against Enel soon and his people's mantra. It would be troublesome if he can't make good use of his own hockey. As Lucas continued to train, the crew met with the brother of that Masara guy from before, who looks like an orangutan, and made a ruckus. Lucas frowned upon hearing the noise and stealthily drilled holes into their ship. Anyway, none of them were devil fruit users so they can drown safely. How he controlled the water from within the cabin was due to his application of observation hockey. He can now see the area around him within two meters. It's still small, but if he only directs it to one side, it would be longer. Since the other side was too noisy, knowing their general direction was pretty easy. Once they noticed they were sinking, they quickly fled instead of causing any more trouble. At the deck, Luffy looked at them in confusion. In the end, just what does that orangutan want? Dunno, anyway those monkey brothers are idiots. After a few minutes, they finally arrived at their destination. This is the place on the map. What's his name again? Mont Blanc Cricket. The man who talks of dreams. Gah! That's so cool! Nami, Usopp, and Luffy looked at the place in disbelief. What they saw was a giant castle. It didn't look like a place of an exiled person at all. Is that his house? He's filthy rich, isn't he? However, Zoro and Sanji weren't amused. Stupid, look clearly. Hmm. A man who dreams, more like a man who wants attention. What are you talking about? Chopper was confused, but they noticed it as well when they neared it and appeared at the side. Ah! Oh, it's just a board. What? At this time, Lucas had also come up to the deck and smiled wryly upon seeing the house. To put it simply, Mont Blanc Cricket's house is just half a house. The other half is just a board with the outer side painted to look like a palace. Seeing this, Nami asked Robin, What dreams did he speak about when he was exiled? I don't know all the details, but he talked about a large amount of gold hidden here on Jaya Island. Gold! You mean like a pirate's treasure. 
everyone was excited. Especially Nami. Dig fast, Chopper. Dig out the gold. Just dig and we'll find it. Chopper immediately believed Nami and started to earnestly dig on the ground. Meanwhile, Luffy was still being himself and went on with his own pace. Hello. I'm coming in. Hey. Don't just walk in there. You saw panic, but of course, Luffy didn't listen at all. Hmm. No one seems to be home. Hello. Luffy stopped that. What if he's a bad guy? While Luffy explored the house, Lucas went over the table and sat as he picked up a picture book that was laid there. Nami noticed him and saw the book in his hands. Ah, a picture book. It's a really old one too. King of Liars, Norland. He. Looking at the title, Nami laughed. Usopp appeared suddenly as if someone had called him. Oh! That sounds like a very interesting book. Lucas thinks that Usopp is better suited for the title King of Liars though. King of Liars, Norland, that brings back old memories. I used to read it a lot. You know about this book, Sanji? But it says it's published in North Blue. Nami asked curiously. Yeah, I was born in North Blue. Didn't I tell you? First time you said anything about it. I thought you were from East Blue. Usopp said, but due to some background noise of Chopper digging, Nami got pissed again. Chopper, what are you doing? Be quiet. Poor Chopper was shocked. It was obviously you who made me dig. Ignoring Chopper, Sanji continued. I grew up in East Blue. But this story is pretty popular in North Blue. People say it's just a kid's story, but I've heard that this Norland guy really did exist. Lucas did not mind them and simply read the picture book. Basically, it's a story about Mont Blanc Norland, an explorer who always spoke of past adventures. One day, he came back from an expedition and went to report to the king. He said he discovered an island across the mighty seas that has a mountain of gold. Naturally, the king wanted to see this himself. So he commanded 2,000 soldiers to come with him. After going through many hardships, they arrived on the island, but only saw an ordinary jungle. Norland was blamed for this and was sentenced to death for all his lies, but his last words were, I know! The mountain of gold sunk into the sea. However, no one believed in him anymore and thought that he could only continue to lie till his death. And the pathetic liar died, without becoming, a true warrior, of the seas. Nami read these last few lines out slowly while looking at Usopp. Knowing what she meant, Usopp was angry. Don't look at me! And stop making up all that stuff. Well, yeah. Those last few lines weren't really in the book. Wawa! Wadash! Luffy fell into the water. What are you doing? As Nami said, Luffy did indeed fell into the water as someone had pulled him down. The next moment, someone emerged from the water and looked at them. Who the hell are you people? This is, none other than Mont Blanc Cricket. Lucas already knew he would arrive and was ready to use his power to pull Luffy back up. You punks got a lot of guts to enter a man's house without permission. This area is my territory. You sob. Go save Luffy now. It's all right, Sanji, I already pulled him out. Upon returning to the surface, Luffy coughed and glared at Cricket. Hey! What was that for? You guys are after the gold, right? Then prepare to die. Cricket didn't care how he got back up so soon and simply attacked. He extended his leg and kicked towards Luffy. Still pissed, Luffy didn't bother to dodge and let Cricket hit him. Sure enough, with a body made of rubber, the kick didn't really hurt him at all. Cricket was surprised, but was still calm. Seeing as his attacks didn't work, he used his gun and shot at Luffy. That's not gonna work either. Just as Luffy was about to give him a knuckle sandwich, Cricket suddenly fainted. Huh? Eh? Hey! After a while, Chopper did his work as a doctor and tried to heal Cricket. Disparism? Zoro asked when Chopper mentioned what happened to Cricket. Ah, you mean he's sick? 
Luffy, who obviously had no clue about such terms, can only ask like that. Lucas added in. Basically means decompression sickness. It's something diverse experience sometimes. Yes. But it's not a long-term illness and should pass. Chopper continued. It happens on a diver's descent. When excess nitrogen enters the body's blood and tissue. Then on ascent, the chemicals diffuse out in the form of bubbles causing various symptoms. Yeah, weird sick stuff. Luffy was no longer able to comprehend anything that came out of Chopper's mouth and could only look out the window and stare at the distance. He must have been diving every day. Not letting the bubbles to dissolve properly. Why would he? I don't know why, but it is very dangerous. In some cases, it can be lethal. Chopper said solemnly. Seeing as everyone turned silent, Lucas spoke. Well, his name is supposed to be Maud Blank Cricket. The same surname as Maud Blank Norland. And Norland's claim about the gold under the sea, do you think they may be related? As he said that, the others looked at each other and thought that it was indeed possible. But, isn't it supposed to be just a story? Nami asked, but Lucas just shrugged. Hey, some stories can be real. After all, this is the One Piece world, and Lucas' world, this is also, just a story. Suddenly, two monkeys, hair, two people appeared at the door. Boss! Are you all right? Ah! They're here to kill us. Though Luffy and the others just stared at the two silently while they also looked at them in confusion, Usopp, Nami, and Chopper panicked. What are you doing here? What did you do to the boss? The two monkey brothers shouted, preparing to attack. We're taking care of him, so leave us alone. They wouldn't listen. They are beasts. Everyone, escape through the window. Luffy just answered them frankly, but Usopp was still afraid. Nami also quickly hid behind Lucas subconsciously. They're such great guys. Ah! They listened. Lucas feels like Usopp is doing some kind of comedic skit here. It was funny reading it in the manga, but looking at Usopp, Lucas felt his head hurt. Since everyone had calmed down and ready to talk, Luffy asked. Do you two live out here too? Actually, our boss home is also the headquarters of the United Primate Armed Forces. Is that primate supposed to be a pun for pirate? However, we usually live on our ships. This house is too small for us. You two are big. But compared to the giants, you're like earwax to them. Seeing Luffy get along well with the two monkey brothers, Usopp asked Zoro. How can they get along so well? They're just simple-minded. After a while, Cricket was finally awake. Mr. Diamond Head. I want to ask you something. Luffy grinned as he entered the house. He called him Diamond Head because Cricket had this weird pointy thing on his head. Frankly, it looks more like the bottom of an acorn than a diamond. Thanks for your help and sorry for all the trouble. I thought you were like those fools trying to steal the gold. Hearing the G word, Nami's eyes turned into bellies again. Gold? You have gold? Don't act like those fools. Usopp immediately chided Nami to stop. You wanted to ask me something, what is it? We want to go to Sky Island. Please tell us how to get there. Chapter 12, New Bounties Sky Island? Mont Blanc Cricket's face looked serious when he heard that but then broke into laughter the next moment. Jaiaaaa! You guys actually believe that? Nami was about to hit him for laughing but Lucas held her still. Air, calm down Nami. He's sick. Sky Island doesn't exist? Luffy asked, still confused. Hee hee, I don't know either, but I knew a man who said it does. He was known as a great liar though, someone who was always being laughed at. Hearing Cricket say that, Luffy turned to Usopp in disbelief. It's not me. You mean Norlin, right? You are, his descendant? Right. He was my great-great-great-grandfather, it's an annoying legacy that goes so far back. But there isn't a trace of his lineage in me. 
the whole Mont Blanc family was exiled to a life of shame. Even now, we are still bad mouthed. Cricket sighed. However, nobody hates him for it. Why not? Because Norland, out of all things, was a very honest man. Since it seemed as if Cricket was about to start explaining from the start of his backstory, Lucas cut in, kinda annoyed with how drawn out it was already getting. Ah, no need for the backstory. We saw the Sky Island already. Right, that monkey guy also saw it so you can ask him. Cricket's mouth went agape. At first, he was annoyed that someone had disrupted him but then heard what he just said. Did someone call me? As if having heard they were called, the monkey brothers appeared again from the door. Masira, these guys said they saw Sky Island? H.M.? Ah! Oh. Right! This was what I wanted to tell you earlier, boss. Masira started to talk non-stop about the incident from before. His spit keeps flying around as he talked, but Lucas redirected those to his orangutan brother who now had a black face. Seeing as Cricket was silent for a while after Masira finished, Luffy was impatient. As I was saying, I want to go to Sky Island. Do you know a way or not? Cricket smiled wryly at Luffy and took a book from the side. Nami saw the cover and was surprised. Captain's Log, could it be Norland's? Yeah, read that line aloud. Ah! Oh. Wow, a 400-year-old logbook, year of the sea 1120, June 21st, clear weather, I set sail from the lively city of Villa following the direction from the log pose, we went northeast, straight out of the dock. Nami continued reading from the log book. It told of a strange small boat that can travel without the help of the wind called Waver. Nami seemed to have taken a liking to that boat. Continuing on, the Waver's source of energy seems to only exist on Sky Island. There were also mentions of a living skyfish found in the Sky Island. The log expressed that though their ship was unable to travel to the island, as a sailor, he wanted to travel to the Sky Island someday. When Nami finished reading it, they were still excited. Sea of the Sky! Just like what Robin said. And judging from the text, it is without a doubt that Sky Island still exists. Chopper was too excited he can't say anything. Lucas smiled right seeing the Luffy and the rest so excited and wondered if they did indeed find a way for him back to his world, would they also, want to visit? As he thought of such fantasies, Cricket had left the room already and talked to the Monkey Brothers. Now listen up. Do you like them? Why are you asking? They seem to want to, go to Sky Island. But there's only one way to reach Sky Island. If they do it alone, they will die for sure boss. Cricket grinned and crossed his arms as he faced the sea. Well then, should we give them a hand? Once they decided, Cricket decided to tell Luffy and the rest everything he knows regarding the Sky Island. In some parts of the sea during the day, it would suddenly become dark as if it's night time. Ooh! I've seen it! I've seen that happen. Right! Yeah! It suddenly becomes night time then those shadows appeared. Then Lucas punched a hole in them and we saw the Sky Island behind it. Luffy and Usopp nodded. Pee punch a hole. In those, giant shadows. Cricket's jaw fell to the floor and looked at Lucas in disbelief. Lucas laughed sheepishly as if saying it was nothing while Nami was angered again and pinched his waist. Lucas was speechless, why am I getting pinched again? Ignoring the two, Cricket continued. In regards to the sudden arrival of night, it is caused by shadows cast by a very dense cloud. Nimbostratus? Clouds like that don't cause the sky to turn completely black. Surprised, Nami asked while Lucas, Usopp, and Chopper added on. Mister, you're so stupid. Days with lots of clouds are just cloudy dot. Yeah, just cloudy dot. Yeah, cloudy. Be quiet and listen. Cricket was pissed. His head hurt from explaining to these idiots. He sighed and continued. Millennium Cumulonimbus is the name for that piece of cloud. It does not ascend or rain. But when it appears in the sky, the sunlight gets blocked completely. The daytime on the ground becomes nighttime. 
Some say that the Millennium Cumulonimbus has been in existence for millions of years, it wouldn't change form and it continues to float around in the sky as if a cloud fossil on. So it's an impossible cloud? That was all that Luffy can take from the conversation, but Chopper seemed to be impressed by him. More or less, it's something that still can't be explained. Luffy, so smart. Lucas sighed and added on. Basically, what he's saying is, we can find the sky island inside that big cloud. Only something like that kind of cloud can possibly carry a whole island. Right. Luffy nodded as if he wanted to say what Lucas just said. Chopper was still impressed. Luffy, so smart. Lucas gave up. Ignoring them, Luffy raised his arm excitedly. All right. I got it. Let's get onto that cloud. Zoro, wake up. Huh? It's morning? Everyone, man your positions. Turn the ship towards the cloud in the sky. Thanks for telling us those things, mister. We don't know how to get there. How many times do I need to tell you that? Nami was angered again and shouted at Luffy's impulsiveness. Rather than that, just what was Luffy thinking? Did he seriously want to turn, upwards? And just sail like that? Lucas was amused at the thought. As Nami pummeled Luffy and Usopp, Cricket spoke again. The real deal is just starting now. I'll warn you first, you need to risk your life. Lucas stared at the two with bruises on their faces. No need to worry, they just did. Cricket continued. The current that shoots upward. If you can get on this current, you can get to the sky, understand? Really? We just need to get blown to the sky, on top of the cloud? Ha ha ha. Luffy seemed to be quite excited. Nami was a bit doubtful. But then, I heard that the ships that get blown into the sky will crash back down into the sea, I heard it in Mock Town. Normally, that is the case. The key here is timing. The more Cricket continued to explain, the paler Usopp's face became. Eventually, he became more afraid than excited. He didn't want to go to Sky Island anymore. Lucas sighed and know that this is just temporary and he would still go anyway. Since it seemed like they will take a while more to plan out, Lucas headed to the forest as he remembered something. Soon, Luffy and the others came back noisily as ever as he demanded food and drinks. Sanji quickly brought in the food and drinks and the party began. As everyone ate and drank, Robin was the only one who remained reading. Seeing this, Cricket approached her and read the last line of the book she's reading. In the skull's right eye, gold is seen. Gold? Nami's ear twitched upon hearing the word. The page that has teardrop on it is Roland's last words. His sentence was carried out that day. I still don't understand what that passage means. Cricket drank some more wine, completely intoxicated. The skull's right eye. Is that a city that was here before? Or is it hinting his death? It's all blank after that. That's why we need to go underwater. Daydream on the bottom of the sea. Yup, woo. Yo, here. We're going to fly. Fly into the sky. Ooh. The crowd becomes all excited after drinking and screaming their dreams. After that, the partying became even louder. In a good mood, Cricket showed off one of the gold they got underwater, a golden bell. Take a look at this. Whoa! Golden bell. Nami's eyes turned to Belly's once again and held the golden bell close to her face and rubbed it on her cheek repeatedly. So the golden city does exist. Cricket showed them another piece of gold. A strange bird holding a bell. The bird is called the South Birds. They still exist on this island. Speaking of South Bird, ever since long ago, the sailors. Damn it! As the two monkeys were about to explain, Cricket suddenly shouted as he noticed something. What? What happened? This is bad. You should go to the forest quickly. Go to the forest south of here. Huh? What are you saying? Are you stupid? Luffy asked, still confused. Catch one of these birds right away. What? 
Why? Bird, what for? Cricket explained in a solemn tone. Listen carefully, the knock upstream that exists directly south of here, how do you think you will get there? Just sail south. No! This is the Grand Line. Once you set sail, you lose all sense of direction. Nami's face paled as she remembered this. That's why you need this bird. It is said that some animals contain some biocompass enhancing their direction sense. Hmm. I heard that pigeons also have this ability. So, Zoro, you are worse than some animals. And who are you to judge? Luffy said to Zoro but was pissed that it was Luffy who pointed this out to him. Cricket ignored them and continued. Among those animals, Southbird has the best sense of direction. No matter how far away you move the bird, it'll always point to the right direction. In other words, you can't do anything without a bird like that. You wouldn't be able to even try getting onto Sky Island. Ah! Oh. Everyone panicked. At this moment, the doors opened and Lucas appeared. H.M.? Everyone's here? Lucas! Where were you? Also, hurry and get out. We need to catch a bird. Luffy ordered. Bird? Oh, speaking of bird, Sanji, see if this is edible? Can you cook it? Cho! Lucas appeared oblivious to the situation but was in fact just playing dumb. He knows that these guys will forget about this and would rush it so he just went ahead and captured one ahead of them. The bird Lucas was holding was indeed the south bird they were looking for. Right now, after hearing Lucas wanted to eat it, the south bird panicked but still faced its head to the south. Look, this thing seems tasty. Cho! The south bird flapped its wings in panic but was unable to break free from Lucas' grasp. Cho! Quiet, or I'll deep fry you. Cho! At this time, everyone finally reacted. The south bird. Lucas! You're amazing. Nice one. Lucas continued to act confused and let them explain. Once they finished explaining, Lucas sighed and looked at the bird with disappointment. Too bad, and it looks tasty too, maybe just forget you saw this and we can go grab one more? After we eat this one? CHOH. Naturally, they didn't agree and just directly placed the south bird in a cage. Seeing everyone so excited, Lucas smiled wryly. There was another reason why Lucas captured the south bird earlier than scheduled. Because at the moment when Luffy and them leave to find the south bird in the original story, he will come here. Sure enough, in a few minutes, his crew arrived. To rob treasures that others worked so hard to acquire, it's such a unique sensation. Let me tell you what people call me. They call me the Hyena ha 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 Hyena Bellamy. Lucas knows that this bastard had insulted Luffy and them back in Mock Town. Though he knows that Luffy didn't want to fight at that time, the truth is, Lucas was still unsatisfied. It was time for revenge. It's you! Nami exclaimed when she saw the crew. One of Bellamy's crew was a man named Sarquis, he wore a goggle-like sunglasses and a fur coat and appeared to be fancy. When he saw Nami again, he grinned. If it isn't the expensive woman from before and her loser captain. How about it, did you change your mind yet? Soon, we'll have the gold, you know? It's not too late to follow me. Ha ha ha. Nami's face went blank when she heard their laughter again and clenched her fists. Ha 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 ha. However, in the middle of his laughter, he suddenly coughed up blood. Sarquis touched his mouth and found his tongue was gone. Lucas glared at Sarquis with killing intent. Is it this tongue that just insulted our navigator and captain? Um and PPH. Everyone looked confused about how Lucas was able to cut his tongue without them noticing. The answer was a high speed and small water current to cut and retrieve it. It was easy to aim and time it with observation hockey. TCH, such a dirty tongue. As if disgusted by the tongue, Lucas dropped it to the ground and trampled on it a few times. NNNGGG. Sarquis was unable to utter a word. At the side, Bellamy finally appeared serious. 
This the guy you had the run in before, Luffy? Yeah. They don't look much. They're just pirates. Luffy shrugged as if Bellamy and the others weren't that far apart from those normal pirates in Mock Town. Sanji calmly lit his cigarette and puffed smoke. It seems they're here to steal the gold these guys painstakingly dove for. Seems so. Want me to turn the guests away, Captain? Zoro also had his hand on one of his katanas. No need. Luffy shook his head. He was pissed. When they were in the bar, he let them insult him since there wasn't any hurt they could do and it was pointless to fight with them. But if these guys were to trample on a man's dream and hard work, he would no longer stand still. Bellamy grimaced seeing as it was Luffy who stepped out and not Lucas. He snorted and turned his legs into springs. Spring, lunge. With the release of the spring, Bellamy shot forward at high speed. Still, Luffy stood there calmly and raised his fist. Without minding Bellamy's speed, Luffy brought his fist down hard. Gah! Luffy didn't even need to use his rubber ability for a small fry like Bellamy. It was an instant KO. Suddenly, a news coup dropped a stack of paper on the ground. The wind blew and the paper appeared right before everyone's eyes. It was the new bounty of Luffy and Zoro. Hmm. Lucas looked at the papers in surprise. Surprisingly, even he had a bounty now. Monkey D. Luffy, 100 million belly. Roranoa Zoro, 60 million belly. Lucas, 80 million belly. As for the rest of Bellamy's crew, they were all frightened. Sanji blew a mouthful of smoke and said, Pick up your captain and get lost. Hearing that, the crew quickly scrambled to pick up Bellamy and ran away. Lucas sighed and didn't bother with them. Instead, picking up his own bounty. 80 million belly, and where did they get this picture? I look awesome. Lucas wondered why those marine officers from before had even given him the bounty rewards of Blackbeard when he has already wanted himself. Well, those corrupt officers are probably not too informed. Zoro also picked up his bounty and grinned. Heh, not too bad. Woo! One hundred million. Luffy was the most excited. However, Usopp and Nami were scared. No good, there are three big criminals on our crew now. The marines are sure to chase us. At the side, Sanji lamented. Why? Why don't I have a bounty too? Don't ask for one. Usopp smacked him at the back of his head. Are you kidding? Three of them having high bounties is enough. You want to add more. Fufu, what do you mean only three? I also have a bounty, remember? Robin giggled and Usopp's face paled even more. It's over, half of the crew have high bounties. Lucas grinned and walked over to Usopp and handed his phone to him. Usopp, quick, take a picture of us as commemoration. Usopp weakly took a picture of Luffy, Zoro, Lucas, and Robin holding their bounties. But soon, it became some sort of photo shoot when Cricket joined in and asked for a picture to be taken as well when he heard of what the phone does. No one spoke about Lucas being from another world as if it was a tacit agreement. Only the Straw Hat Pirates knew of the secret. After a while, they soon began to work on the ship and fit it to be able to travel the current of the knock upstream. Lucas held his phone and stared at the night sky in excitement. Sky Island, here we come. Chapter 13, Night of the Sky Wow! Amazing! Luffy stared at the new appearance of the ship with glittering eyes. Usopp's nose seemed to be longer as he introduced the ship. This is the SS forward arrow mode. Mary looks like a turkey. At the side, Lucas smiled wryly. That's what you find interesting. After taking another group photo with the turkey going merry behind them, Cricket sat on the table and lit a cigarette. While everyone was excited to board, Lucas saw Luffy approach Cricket. Hurry and get on the ship, there's no time. Do you want to give up your chance to Sky Island for nothing? Fool! Cricket chided Luffy, but he didn't mind it. Um, for the ship, thank you. If you want to say thank you, say it to them. Cricket pointed at the Monkey Brothers. 
Yeah. Thank you, guys. I'll give Hercules to you. Really? We can keep it. You are a really great guy. Lucas heard it as well and nearly stumbled. When did Luffy find the time to catch a beetle? Anyways, we don't have time. Get on the ship. Or we wouldn't make it in time. We will lead the way, just follow us. Everyone was already on board except for Luffy. Luffy! Hurry! Yeah! Cricket watched Luffy's back for a moment before shouting. United Primate Armed Forces. Don't mess this up. No matter what happens, give it your all for these guys. Wuh! Okay. Let's go. Everyone, set sail. All right. As everyone began to prepare and set sail, Cricket approached the ship and spoke to Luffy again. Kid! We will part here. Imin! Others might laugh at us for dreaming of the impossible, but that doesn't matter. This is romantic. It's romantic? Luffy asked. Yup. Don't crash, you guys. Shishishishi. By Mr. Luffy grinned and waved goodbye. Soon, the three ships departed with going merry sailing between the two bigger ships of the Monkey Brothers. On the way, the Monkey Brothers tried to explain through the whole process once again but Luffy didn't mind them and simply played with the South Bird by trying to turn its head. Look! He turned south again. Ha ha ha. Cho! 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 The South Bird chirped angrily while Chopper translated. It said, I'll turn away from south and give you guys a headache. Ha ha ha. Go try it. Luffy encouraged the bird so it did turn its head to the north instead. However, soon, it felt uncomfortable and turned back to south. Ya ha ha ha. He won't feel right unless he's facing south. Usopp and Luffy laughed at the bird. Seeing those guys fool around, the Monkey Brothers could only sigh and let them enjoy their time. Lucas smiled wryly as well. It's all right, guys, just relax and go forward. The journey will still take a few hours, so Lucas decided to spar with Zoro once again. Naturally, he was blindfolded. Three hours passed with Luffy and the others goofing off while Lucas and Zoro trained. Sanji was busy cooking and fooling around with Nami and Robin the whole time. In the distance, they finally saw the huge dense clouds. Night is about to approach again and they will be below the Sky Island at that time. The Monkey Brothers immediately issued orders to dive and find the stream. Lucas heard the ruckus as well and closed his eyes as he expanded his observation hockey, trying to feel the waves beneath. Suddenly, he felt something odd in one direction. Ten o'clock direction. Found huge waves. Quite likely a giant whirlpool. One of the monkey divers also said the same thing. That's it. Turn the ship to 10 o'clock direction. That thing is the sign for the explosion. Follow the whirlpool closely. Don't back out. The waves suddenly become huge and the ships rock back and forth. Everyone quickly held onto the nearest handles, but Usopp and Chopper were a bit late so they've been flinging around the ship, unable to hold still. Lucas caught Chopper as soon as he was near him but ignored Usopp. Anyway, this guy would be fine. Nami! How is the log pose? Robin asked. It keeps pointing at that cloud. The waves become even stronger. Soon, signs of a whirlpool had begun to appear and the ship started to circle around a certain point. We will take you to the track of the whirlpool. And then, what do we do after that? Follow the current. Head to the center. Hearing Masara say that, Nami's face went pale. You never said we need to get sucked in. Don't worry. I will protect Miss Nami and Robin Chan. This is my first time seeing such a huge whirlpool. No. No, no, no. Go back. I want to go back. Forget it, Usopp. It's too late. Somebody is already. Hyper. Hmm. I wonder if I can make such a thing in the future as well. Here I come. Sky Island. 
As the crew set off to the middle of the whirlpool while feeling various emotions, the swirling stopped abruptly. But this was the calm before the storm. Lucas can feel the waves churning below them, ready to be unleashed. Everyone hold on. Jaya! The sea is going to blow upward. Asterisk boom. Asterisk. From a distance, you can see a huge white pillar south of Jaya shoot directly to the sky as if it was struck by a spear. Nearby, the Monkey Brothers' ships were swaying from the blast, but they both still looked up with a grin. Go, you guys, to Sky Island. If one can see the side of the giant water pillar, you could see a small ship with wings sailing on the sides. Luffy didn't know why this is happening, but he was still excited. All right. If we go like this, we can get to the sky. Forward. SS forward. However, just as Luffy is being optimistic, others weren't. The ship's beginning to leave the stream. Eh. If this goes on much longer, we will get bounced off. Everyone's faces paled as they keep seeing sea kings and other debris fall off from the stream ahead. Lucas acted quickly and was already on the main mast. Set down the sail. Lucas is right. Quick! We'll catch the wind coming from below. Nami noticed Lucas' intentions immediately and began issuing orders. Everyone quickly ran all over the ship to get ready. Just as the ship was about to leave the stream, it started to fly parallel to the stream. It's flying. I wonder what's on top of there. Entering the Millennium Cumulonimbus. Woo-woo. As soon as the crew was out of the cloud, everyone began to gasp for breath. Not to mention the severe pressure they had to take in for launching themselves way up in the sky, they were also mentally exhausted from such an experience. After all, not everyone can just ride a huge stream upwards and land on the sky. Seeing as everything seemed to calm down, the crew looked around their surroundings. Damn, what happened? Is everyone all right? Hey! Look, you guys. Outside the ship. Luffy was still as happy as ever. Lucas smiled wryly and looked out as well. As far as the eye can see, we're endless whiteness of clouds. What is this place? It's so white. Clouds. On top of the clouds, how are we sailing on clouds? Nami couldn't believe her eyes. Still, Luffy just laughed at her. Of course we can sail on top of it. They're just clouds slash. No! That's still impossible. Though everyone thought that, the truth's right in front of them. In other words, this is the sea of the sky. Nami looked at the log pose in confusion. But look, the log pose is still pointing up. Maybe this is only the middle part. We need to go higher? How? I have no idea. Nami felt helpless, after all that trouble with the knock upstream to shoot themselves to the sky, only to end up midway, how can they still go a level higher? While Nami can be said to be an expert in the sea, this sea in the sky is uncharted territory even for her. Lucas sighed and just patted Nami. Well, we'll figure a way, for now, we should set sail. That's all we can do. At the side, Usopp finally woke up and started clamoring about swimming in the clouds. After he dived in, no matter how everyone waited, Usopp never came back. Just a thought, but is there really a seafloor? You mean? Robin asked and everyone let out a cold sweat. Lucas heard this as well and sweats began to drip down from his face. Damn, I forgot about this. Luffy finally realized the situation and quickly stretched his hand downwards while Robin made her eyes appear on his hand to look for Usopp. It took a while but Robin finally found Usopp and pulled him up. However, as Luffy pulled Usopp up, sea creatures followed Usopp like bait. Something followed him. They want to eat Usopp. It was a huge octopus and eel. Zoro acted quickly and cut one of the tentacles nearby. But as soon as he did, there wasn't any blood that spilled, rather, the tentacle popped. Like a balloon. Huh. Though everyone was shocked, Sanji, Luffy, and Lucas still moved in for the kill. Anyway, 
sea creatures of this size can still bring down their ship. It would be bad if their ship sunk in the sky. Oh, this is a weird-looking animal. I wonder if this is considered a fish. That octopus was like a balloon. So there are animals in the clouds. What's this flat snake? It's a flatfish because it's flat. So this is a flatfish? The crew began their idle chatter as soon as they were safe. Suddenly, Usopp shouted. So noisy. What is it this time, Usopp? My pants. This was in my pants. Usopp pulled out a weird flat-looking fish from his pants. Seeing where the fish was located, Robin looked at Usopp in pity. Such a tough day for him. Sky Island so scary, Sky Island so scary. Robin picked up the fish and studied it. She came to the conclusion that the fish looked differently due to evolving or surviving in this sort of environment. Well, soon after, Luffy brought the fish to Sanji who cooked it. This is yummy. Luffy, that's dirty. Ah. Nami was also about to take a bite when Lucas suddenly said that. She remembered where they found the fish and looked at Usopp who was still in pain in his lower body. Instantly, Nami threw the food away. Ah. Oh, my fish. Why did you cook this? At the side, Chopper was looking for the Sky Island with a pair of binoculars when he noticed a ship. Hey everyone. There's a ship and a person, E.H. What is it? Chopper. Luffy asked when he saw Chopper panic and drop the binoculars. Chopper, a ship? A ship is over there? No, um, there was a ship, but the ship isn't there anymore. What do you mean? Chopper tried to explain, but he was panicking too much for anyone to understand. Lucas didn't mind him and was looking at that direction as well with a serious expression. Someone's coming. Sanji noticed as well when he saw a person wearing a bull-like mask seemingly ride the clouds. A human. He's running on the cloud. Lucas controlled the water vapors in the cloud to attack the man. The man jumped and easily dodged it as he came on board the ship. Eliminate. He wants to fight. He's got guts. Sanji and Zoro were ready for battle but were easily brought down by the bull-masked man. Luffy tried to help as well, but was also beaten. Eh. What's wrong with you three? Nami was surprised at how fast Luffy, Zoro, and Sanji were beaten. Just as the bull-masked man was about to attack Lucas from the back, Lucas tilted his body sideways to dodge it in time. Lucas' face was pale. He knew that fighting here would feel different from the change in pressure and such, but he didn't think it would be this difficult to move. Thankfully, he had the observation hockey and was able to dodge better. The bull-masked man was surprised that he missed but didn't pay it too much attention. He jumped up and aimed the huge cannon he was holding towards the ship. That's enough. Suddenly, from the sky, a person wearing armor dove in from the skies and attacked the bull-masked man with his lance. Nami was even more afraid of all these weird people popping up. What? Who is it this time? Ooh, I am, the Knight of the Sky. Chapter 14, Skypea. Is he gone? TSK, this is so frustrating. It's like my body won't move as I command. Luffy, Sanji, and Zoro gasped for breath after being knocked out like that so easily. It was the first time they all felt so, weak. Lucas sighed and explained. The pressure in this place is not something we're used to, and the air is thinner here as well. Hearing their conversation, the knight asked, Ah, to be saying those words, are you citizens of the Blue Seas? Blue Seas? What's that? By the way, who are you? Nami asked as well. I would be the knight of the sky. All living beings under the cloud are citizens of the Blue Seas. In other words, did you come up from the Blue Seas? Um, yes. It can't be helped then. This place is 7,000 meters above the Blue Seas, called the White Sea. Above this place is the White White Sea, 10,000 meters. Average citizens of the Blue Seas won't be able to stand it. Or so the knight explained, but Luffy and Zoro weren't convinced. Okay, 
I'm slowly getting used to it already. Yup, it feels much better now. Even Lucas sweated a bit. These guys are too much of a freak. Afterward, the knight continued to explain the situation in this place and handed a whistle to Luffy. Each whistle will cost you 50 million extols. Just blow from it and I will save you. Extols? I think that should be the currency in the Sky Island. Lucas explained to Luffy. The knight seemed to have realized something and was shocked. No way, you guys didn't come here through the top of high waste? Then you must have been to one or two islands, right? Though the others were confused as to what the knight was saying, Nami was quite sharp and noticed. Wait! There are other ways to get to this sky ocean. Also, you said one or two islands, isn't there only one sky island? Don't tell me you guys actually came using that monstrous stream. I never thought there would still be people this brave. So it wasn't the normal way to get here. Nami was teary-eyed. All that trouble and there was actually a proper way to get to the Sky Island. Luffy didn't mind it that much though. We're here anyway, right? We almost died. If we patiently collected more information, we could have used a safer method. Nami strangled Luffy. Thankfully, he was made of rubber, otherwise, the Straw Hat Pirates would need to have a new captain. The knight smiled and showed his index finger. One whistle. Blow the whistle once, and I will come down from the sky to save you. Usually, I would charge with 50 million extols, but I'll give you guys the first one for free. He stood up and prepared to leave. Use the whistle to call me at any time. Wait! We don't even know your name. The knight smiled and introduced himself. My name is Gone Fall, the Knight of the Sky. And this is my partner, Pierre. A strange dotted bird appeared by his side and began to transform. I forgot to introduce my partner Pierre, even though he's a bird, he has the power of the horse fruit. Which means... No way! It's a pegasus! That's right! Gonfall stuck a pose with Pierre who had now turned into a winged horse, only, it didn't look quite right. What was supposed to be a cool-looking pegasus now looks like a joke, the spots even stuck to it making it looked extremely weird. Lucas thought it was still funny so he snapped a picture before Gonfall flew away. Wings huh? Without any reason, Lucas just thought how cool it would be if he has wings, of course, not with spots. In the end, he didn't tell us anything useful huh? Yeah. Then how do we get higher? Okay, let's call Mr. and ask him. Luffy nodded and was about to blow on the whistle but his cheeks were pulled down by Usopp and Nami. Wait! Luffy! This is for emergency. If that weird mask guy comes again, what will we do without the whistle? It seems that these two had already lost faith in Luffy and the other's strength. Lucas sighed and noticed something in the distance. For starters, why don't we go to that cloud that looks like a waterfall? And so, the crew moved in that direction. However, they were soon blocked by a huge piece of cloud. It's floating on the sky ocean so it's probably another kind of sky ocean. Then what kind of cloud? If it's normal cloud, we can just sail through it? We'll know if we touch it, right? Luffy laughed and stretched his arm all the way over to the piece of cloud. Wah! It bounced off. In a few seconds, Luffy, Usopp, and Chopper were already playing on top of the cloud as they bounced on and off. Nami was about to scold them again when Lucas patted her shoulder. It's fine. Let them play for a while. Fine. But while you're at it, find us a path. Roger! Usopp shouted in acknowledgement and went off to play. Lucas was itching to go play as well but saw Nami glaring at him already so he can only sigh and man the wheel. After a while, the ship finally managed to go past the huge clouds and arrived at the end of the waterfall-like cloud. When they reached it, they saw a huge gate with a sign on top. Heaven's Gate. Bad omen. It's like we're going to die. Usopp started shaking while sweating bullets. Zoro laughed at him and said, Yeah, it's totally unexpected. Maybe we're actually dead already? Really? If that's so, 
then this strange world can be explained. Hearing Sanji, Chopper was badly frightened. We're already dead. Heaven! Ha ha ha! So funny! We can finally get there through here. Luffy laughed like there's no tomorrow. As for Lucas, he naturally took a selfie first before anything else. If he can still post on social media, it would be even better. A pity that this is another world and he can't connect to the internet. Lucas looked at his phone and smiled when he remembered what his father said when he gave this smartphone to him in the past. Son, this phone is extremely special. I even asked Tony Stark to make it. Ha huh, sure dad. Whatever you say. Lucas didn't think much of it back then and simply thought that his father made up a story. Though the smartphone is indeed high-tech with how it can seemingly charge itself somehow, Lucas always thought that his father had been sneakily charging it when he sleeps or something. But now, being in this world and this phone still at full bars, Lucas wondered just who his father was. It can't be that this is really made by Iron Man, right? Lucas shook his head and smiled. Nah, being in One Piece world is already surreal enough, the Marvel world should be just comics. Just as he was contemplating on such things, he remembered something and headed inside the cabin. Right after Lucas went inside, someone appeared from the sides of the gate. Are you here for sightseeing? Or, here to fight? An old woman with wings asked as she held up a camera and took pictures of the whole crew. Actually, it doesn't matter why you're here. If you want to go up, each person must pay one billion extal entrance fee. That's the law. Seeing a person with wings for the first time, Luffy was shocked. Angel. So that's how angels look like, she looks like dried sour fruit candy. One billion extal, how much is that when converted to belly? Uh, if we don't, have money. You can still go up. Really? Usopp was confused. If they can still go up without paying, then why bother paying? If you don't want to go up, it's okay too. I'm not a guard or a soldier. I just want to know your intentions. Then we will go. We want to go to Sky Island. Even though we don't have money, we will go granny. Really? Seven people, right? No, we have EI Dash. Nami quickly shut Luffy's mouth just as he was about to honestly answer. Luffy looked at Nami in confusion but Nami ignored him. Wanting to change the topic immediately before the old angel noticed anything, Nami asked. Um, how do we get up? Just as she asked this, a pair of pincer hands suddenly appeared from both sides of the ship. What? Something appeared. That's why it sees special speedy shrimp. He will lead you up. Inside the cabin, Lucas felt the whole ship suddenly gain momentum and speed up. A cold sweat fell along his forehead. We're on the move. Don't tell me, they didn't pay. Lucas remembered that 10,000 extal is equal to one belly. The entrance fee is 1 billion extal per person, which is about 100,000 belly. For the eight of them, it would be 800,000 belly. The money he got from Blackbeard's crew is enough for it and they would still have a lot left over. Though Nami will probably hate him if he really did hand over 800,000 belly, it would be worth it to enjoy the Sky Island without getting into any trouble so they can just relax. Well, seems he's too late anyway, the Straw Hats have once again illegally entered Sky Island. Lucas sighed. Anyway, what's done is done. He headed out and was just in time to see the entrance. There was a sign at the end. Godland, Skypea. There's an island. It's Sky Island. Yeah. The crew was so excited that they jumped to the shore as soon as they're near. Zoro was the only one cool-headed and went to grab the anchor. Hey! What about the anchor? There is probably no bottom in this sea right. That kind of thing doesn't matter. Hurry! Look! This beach is so soft. Doesn't matter, you. Zoro was speechless. Dropping anchor is one of the necessities when near an island yet Luffy just brushed it off. He shook his head helplessly and smiled. Anyway, this scenery is really amazing, it's like in a dream. 
Lucas grinned as well. Ha ha. It's the kind that makes you feel so excited in the heart. Cho! Hearing the strange bird noise, Lucas turned to see Nami letting the south bird go. Geez, forgot to let him go earlier. However, Lucas wasn't really minding the bird but Nami's outfit. Sure enough, Nami is really quite bold and sexy. Though she's wearing shorts, her top is only a bikini bra with a camouflage design. Robin also looks nice wearing a tank top with wavy designs. HM, the scenery here is indeed amazing. Nami noticed Lucas' look and grinned. Come on! Let's join Luffy and the others. Ah! Uh, hey, wait! Nami didn't wait for Lucas and pushed him off the ship. It was fine since the cloud beneath was so soft, but did she really have to push me off? Lucas can only smile and catch Nami when she jumped next. Meanwhile, Luffy was having a hard time holding it in anymore. Hiya! What's this? This place is filled with the sin of adventure. Soon, everyone began to play and fool around. Lucas also took a lot of pictures as memories. After all, who knows how long will he be stuck in this world, he doesn't know how he got here, so it could also be that he would suddenly just appear back in his room. If that really happens. What are you thinking about? Lucas suddenly felt a different kind of softness from behind him. Nami, it's nothing. Just thinking of some things. Lucas cleared his throat and stood up. Ahem, right. I'm thinking of exploring the island a bit. Tell the others I'll be away for a while. I'll see you guys later. Ah. Uh, but. I'm just walking around. Don't worry. If I encounter any danger, I'll escape. Nami pouted. Fine. Go away then. Lucas smiled helplessly and patted her head silently before walking away. Nami watched his back for a while before turning away. Stupid, such a nice island, can't we just relax together? The next scene was where Luffy and the rest met up with Konies, a kind-hearted citizen of Skypea, and would start to cause trouble, but Lucas didn't mind them. Though Enel is not a threat to Luffy, he is still quite an annoying enemy. Lucas wants to see if he can defeat him earlier than scheduled. That way, Luffy and the others can enjoy their time in the Sky Island more and relax. For the sake of relaxing more with Nami and Robin, Enel must be defeated. Air, er, no. I mean, for the sake of peace in Skypea, Enel must be defeated. And so, Lucas went to the one forbidden place in Skypea, the Holy Land, Upper Yard. Currently, in front of him were four gates. Trial of Swamp. Trial of Iron. Trial of String. Trial of Orb. Lucas didn't really have a boat but simply ran while controlling the clouds beneath him to make him reach here fast. It took him a while but Lucas learned that he can also manipulate the clouds by using the water properties that partially formed it. He looked at the four gates and thought for a while. In the original story, Luffy and the rest went to the trial of Orb first. Lucas shrugged. Guess I'll go with that then. Feeling that it was pointless to pick any, Lucas decided to follow the story and went in the trial of Orb first. Soon, he landed in a field filled with strange floating white balls in the air. Since those orbs are made of clouds, there was no issue for Lucas who can control them at will. Hoo! Welcome to my trial of orb. Hoo! As Lucas was passing through, a weird fat guy that's shaped exactly like a ball appeared. This must be Skypea's priest. Satori of the forest. Hoo! Are you perhaps lost? This land is forbidden to enter. I'm not lost. I came here to meet Enel. Hoo. You want to meet God? Have you come to die? Hoo. No. I came here to kick his ass. Satori stopped laughing. If so, then I must kill you here. Satori charged over and brought his palm forward. He grinned as he saw Lucas still standing with his palm nearing his face. Lucas knows there is an impact dial hidden in his palm which can inflict damage to normal devil fruit users, but he wasn't a normal devil fruit user. Not to mention, 
he also knows observation hockey. Lucas tilted his head to the side and sent a punch over at the same time. Satora's eyes widened in surprise as he quickly retreated to dodge Lucas' attack. You know mantra. Mantra, is that what you call it here? Well, I guess you can say so. Lucas grinned and beckoned Satori with his fingers. This would be the perfect opportunity to further hone his hockey, Lucas didn't want to end it too quickly. Come. Chapter 15, Trials of Upper Yard Satori was angered at Lucas' carefree attitude. He hopped on top of an orb cloud and kicked it. Though it seemed as if he wanted to send the cloud to Lucas, it actually hit another orb cloud, then another, then another. In a few seconds, Lucas' surroundings were surrounded by orb clouds moving about unpredictably. Lucas knows that various things are stored in those clouds which could either be harmless or deadly. But that didn't matter as long as it doesn't hit him. He can simply will the clouds to move away but Lucas wanted to train his observation hockey more. Lucas closed his eyes and began to feel his surroundings. The area he can sense continued to expand. At first, it was a measly two meters. But now, he can reach up to five meters around him. And it is still growing as he continued to train. Lucas grinned. Just as he thought, this place is the perfect place to train observation hockey. Satori being here just added more in the difficulty. As Lucas continued to dodge the orb clouds while his eyes were closed, Satori's face was grim. He didn't think that Lucas' mantra is so formidable. Even he can't keep up mantra for this long and accurate. Seeing as the situation isn't getting any better for him, Satori decided to attack as well. Lucas grinned when he sensed Satori send another palm strike at him and easily dodged that as well. Not only that, he grabbed his arm and smashed him at an incoming orb cloud. With Satori's mantra, he naturally sensed what Lucas would do and tried to dodge, but it was as if Lucas still knew where he would dodge and still end up catching him. Satori's face fell. How come this guy is so adept at mantra? Lucas swung Satori on an orb cloud which exploded into flames. What's wrong? Isn't the survivability rate of this trial only 10%? Gur! You bastard. Orb Dragon! Satori was truly angered. Suddenly, a bunch of orb clouds stuck to each other and at the head of it, a dragon mask was placed. Lucas sighed and opened his eyes. Well, this is no longer fun. Hoo hoo! How is it? Want to surrender now? Hoo hoo! Nah. I just thought I'd end it here and proceed. Lucas waved his hand and the orb dragon suddenly switched direction. W wa dash. Goodbye, priest Satori. Hope you ascend to heaven or something. Boom! A huge explosion covered the forest. Lucas quickly guarded against it by controlling some orb clouds to shield him. After a while, the dust cleared and revealed a huge crater. At the center, Satori lay there unmoving. Lucas sensed him for a while before sighing. Well, guess he didn't die. Lucky him. He shrugged and continued on by following the cloud road. Lucas sped up and soon reached a huge clearing. All over the plain, there seemed to be stakes with skulls placed on top of them. This where the trial of iron should be. Is it you? The one who defeated Satori? A bald man with pointy sunglasses appeared and spoke to Lucas. Beside him was a big whitish yellow dog. Lucas remembered that this should be holy, a dog who knows martial arts. So what if I am? I am Om. And this is my trial of iron. You are met with bad luck, the survivability rate in this trial is 0%. Lucas grinned. Are you talking about your survivability? Impudent. Today, you will die. As he said that, something shot out from the ground in the area around them. Looking closely, what shot out were white barbed wires. White barbed iron deathmatch. Ohm didn't waste any second and slashed his sword made from iron cloud. Eyes and whip. The sword bent like a whip and shot towards Lucas. Still, Lucas didn't bother to dodge much and simply tilted his body to the side. Truth is, 
Lucas didn't need to dodge as the whip would simply pass through his body but Lucas still wanted to use this opportunity to train in hockey. Seeing this, Ohm's expression froze for a second before returning back to normal. You know Mantra, so that's how you manage to beat Satori. But that is not enough for you to leave this place alive. Ohm waved his sword again and it changed into a long spear that shot towards Lucas. Eyes and Florette. Woof. Holy, who originally didn't want to do anything, charged over from the side and sent a flying kick in concert with Ohm's attack. Lucas saw through both attacks and dodged easily. That's a nice sword you have there. It can even change shapes. He was actually quite relaxed. Lucas dashed forward and sent a punch at Ohm who still stood there unmoving. Eyes and back. The iron cloud changed form again and created a huge wall to defend. A pity that it was still made of cloud in the end. A hole suddenly appeared from the cloud wall and Lucas' fist followed. Ohm's eyes widened and tried to quickly dodge to the side but Lucas was still a step ahead of him. He controlled the iron cloud and numerous spikes emerged and shot at Ohm in all directions. W what? Ohm was no longer able to dodge. Lucas saw Ohm wounded and bloodied all over and turned to look at Holy. Actually, he felt a bit bad hurting this dog since he used to have a pet dog previously. As such, Lucas only knocked him out after fighting him for a bit. Lucas thought for a moment while looking at Ohm. It seems, I have grown quite OP, or is it just that my abilities make me a really bad match to these guys who use clouds in their attacks? Lucas smiled wryly and picked up Ohm's iron cloud sword. This can prove to be handy, though I have to ask Usopp to fix up the appearance since this looks weird. After deciding for a while, Lucas thought that it was time to get a weapon of his own. A changeable and hard weapon like this suits him just perfectly. Lucas then continued. As for this dome of barbed wires, it was pointless as Lucas simply passed through it. Soon, he reached the trial of string. Before him was a man wearing aviator clothes and a weird pointy mustache. There was also a big purple vulture-like bird beside him. This should be Shura and his fire-breathing bird, Fuza. Shura held his lance and pointed it at Lucas. I don't care how you defeated Satori and Ohm. But your luck ends here. Shura no longer wasted on words as he hopped on Fuza and charged towards Lucas directly. Fast! But, Lucas already saw their move coming two seconds ago. Lucas held the iron cloud sword and swung it. Two flashes were made in that half a second they made contact. However, it was still Shura and Fuza who fell while their bodies were covered in blood. These, string clouds you placed everywhere is very pointless to me. Count it as your bad luck for meeting me. Lucas shook his head and didn't bother to look back. The next trial was the trial of Swamp. A dark-skinned man with weird tentacle-like hairstyle appeared before Lucas with his arms crossed. Mmm. 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 I don't understand what you're saying if you don't open your mouth. Ah. Lucas knew who this is, Gadatsu, this oddest character in the Skypea arc. Frankly, his trial is also stupid. Survivability is 50% because, when it comes to it, it's just luck if you step in a swamp cloud or not. Lucas no longer wanted to waste any time on this idiot and quickly ended him. It was actually easy, he just sunk him in one of his swamp, and he dove deeper by himself when he activated the milky dial in his shoes. Lucas didn't want to stay here any longer as he may catch Gadatz's idiotness. Like this, Lucas reached the altar of sacrifice which was surrounded by a lake. Just in time, a strange shrimp appeared seemingly carrying something and tossed it on top of the altar. What is this? Where are we? We should be somewhere in the upper yard. It looks like a sacrificial altar. There's a bunch of sky sharks beneath. Lucas blanked out for a while before smiling helplessly. It seems that these guys were still caught in the end. Lucas stabbed the iron cloud sword on the ground and extended the length, causing him to propel forwards and onto the ship. Hey, I've only been gone for a few hours and you all got yourselves into trouble already. Lucas! Nami, 
who was originally on the brink of collapse from her fear of the supposed god in this place, saw that Lucas had arrived and immediately jumped in his embrace. Lucas was surprised as he didn't think Nami would do that so he only stood there for a while. Inwardly, he was thinking how unlucky it was that Nami was no longer wearing her bikini top and instead, wore a shirt. Zoro didn't care about them and asked. You were here this whole time? Ah, yeah. I was out exploring and came here. Though, a bunch of these priest guys attacked me. Hearing that, Nami quickly separated and looked at Lucas in worry. Priests! You met them. Are you okay? Yeah. As you can see, I'm fine. Look, I got this sword from one of them after I beat him. It can change shape at will. Isn't it neat? Lucas showed them Ohm's iron cloud sword and changed its shape a few times. Chopper's eyes shone and exclaimed. Awesome! Hmm, this must be another form of dial that Coney's mentioned. Robin also looked at the sword curiously. Even Zoro looked interested as it is a sword. However, Nami's face was pale. Why you beat one of the priests? H.M.? Nah. P. Few, that's good. I beat four of them. We are so dead. Initially, Nami sighed in relief and thought they can still salvage the situation but Lucas' latter words made her cry. She had seen what this god in can do, and she is utterly terrified of his divine punishment. Lucas knew what Nami was thinking but didn't know what to say so he simply teased her. Don't worry. Aren't we already in heaven? Needless to say, he earned a knuckle to the head. God damn it. This woman really hits hard. Next time. Next time I really will turn to water. Lucas sighed again. Right. Where are Luffy and the others? Lucas asked since only Nami, Zoro, Chopper, and Robin are here. They should be headed here to look for us for sure. But we can't just stay here and wait for them. Lucas, can you place the ship in the lake below? I can. Good. We should set sail then. Lucas waved the iron cloud sword and manipulated the shape in such a way that it scoops up the ship from below. Watching me work, Zoro raised a brow. That thing's very convenient. Right? Soon, Lucas was able to land the ship to the lake below. As for the sky sharks, as soon as they surfaced to attack, Zoro had already cut them in half. Robin also broke their backs with her ability. When the other sky sharks saw how strong they are, they no longer bothered the ship and simply swam away. Before leaving, Robin asked to borrow Lucas' phone and took pictures of the wall full of engravings on the altar. This altar is at least 1,000 years old. Seeing such historical remains makes me quite excited. Ha huh, well, who knows? We may even find gems or treasures here. Hearing that, Nami's eyes turned to Belly's again. What are we waiting for? Let's go! Nami? But I thought you were scared? Chopper asked. We're exploring history. Though Nami answered that, her eyes were still full of bellies. Lucas can only shake his head and turn to Zoro. So, any idea where to go? God's on this island, right? I want to go meet him. And just why would you want to meet someone scary like that? Nami paled again when she heard Zoro's decision, but Zoro just snorted. I dunno. That depends on him. Zoro is more arrogant than God. As they began to set off, Lucas froze. Everyone out. H. Huh? Nami and the rest were confused as to why Lucas would suddenly scream like that, but there was no time. Lucas didn't care about their reactions and quickly sent them all away to the forest. L. Lucas. W. What are you, Dash? Nami. No matter what happens, Dash. Lucas didn't have the time to finish his sentence nor able to leave the ship himself. A bright light appeared from the sky and then... Boom! A huge pillar of lightning engulfs Lucas along with going merry. Lucas! Nami and the others shouted. When the light subsided, all they saw was a huge hole and the head of going merry beside them which seemed to have flung itself towards them. 
Chopper's face went pale as he picked up the only remaining piece of going merry. No. Nuu. Hearing his crewmate's tear-filled cry, Zoro gritted his teeth and clenched on his sword so tight that his hand bled. Robin was also saddened. She was still holding onto Lucas' phone when Lucas pushed them away. She looked at the phone in her hands and gripped it tightly. At the side, Zoro saw the weird sword that Lucas had also by his side. He picked it up and looked at the never-ending hole in front of them then walked away. Where are you going? Robin asked. I'm going to cut down God. Chapter 16, God God! God! Soon, Luffy and the others arrived at the scene. When they all heard what happened, Luffy's face was as grim as it can be. A few distances away from them, there were wolves lurking about in their surroundings, waiting for an opportunity to attack. Suddenly, an invisible wave of power surged from Luffy. The wolves' eyes rolled upwards, soon, they all fell unconscious and foams started to appear from their mouths. If Lucas was still here, he would know that Luffy just used the Emperor's hockey. A pity that no one was watching at this time, not even Inel felt it. Meanwhile, in the God's Palace, a man with long earlobes and a taiko drums attached to his back which formed a ring behind him was laughing as he ate a banana that was peeled by his servant. This was none other than God Inel. Yeah, You should have seen the looks on their faces. That white-haired brat has defeated my four priests, and he thinks I'll continue to let him be? Yeah, It is naturally divine retribution to those who go against God. One of Enel's subordinates was quick to flatter him. Yeah, Let's see, we have fifty soldiers, including me, that's fifty-one fighters. There are twenty Shandians coming here, and seven citizens of the Blue Sea that's currently in the forest. Enel counted. So the total is seventy-eight fighters. Now, this will be a survival game. Yeah. The question is, how many fighters will remain after three hours? Anyone want to guess? Enel looked at his subordinates and pointed someone with his foot. You, take a guess. Hmm. The militia is very strong so they won't fall easily. Though the enemies are strong as well, their strongest fighter, the one who defeated the four priests, is already dead. The rest should be SOSO. I will say about fifty will remain. Yeah. You think so? That is an optimistic guess. You seem to underestimate the violence of the upcoming battle. Then how does God see this situation? Enel's smile vanished as he made his declaration. I will tell you. After three hours, out of the seventy-eight fighters I counted, exactly five will still be standing. As Enel laughed in his throne looking down on everyone, a certain white-haired person opened his eyes after a while. The moment Lucas opened his eyes, all he saw was the white clouds above him as he felt the wind from his back. I'm alive? Ah! I'm Fali Aini 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 Aini. Lucas blanked out for a moment before finally figuring out his situation. Looking down, he could only see the endless sea beneath. Shit, 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 shit. Ah. Even though he may think at the back of his mind that he will survive the fall, the intense pressure from falling made him feel mentally afraid. Besides, even if he did survive the fall, who knows where he will end up? He has to get back. He needs to go back somehow to the Sky Island. Lucas feared that if Luffy and the rest thought he was dead, that they would go directly to Enel. Luffy can probably beat him but the others may not survive. Since he defeated all the priests already, Enel might be angrier and would no longer play around. There would surely be many changes to the story and Lucas doesn't know if it would be good or not. Inwardly, Lucas regretted moving on his own, but there was no use thinking about it now. Air, Fly! Fly! Damn it! In his mind, Lucas thought that if he had wings or other powers that can let him fly, it would be better. Lucas tried shooting high-pressure water beneath him to push him up but, the speed of his fall is too great and he can't control the direction accurately. Gritting his teeth, Lucas shut his eyes and braced for impact while still thinking of wanting to fly. Suddenly, the momentum of his fall stopped. 
Confused, Lucas opened his eyes. I'm flying. Still confused, Lucas blinked for a while then looked behind him. There were actually a pair of huge white wings. W what the dash? How? Lucas is truly confused. Even more confused now. He thought his fruit ability was to counter any situation that was bad for him, like when he was dried up from crocodile sand powers, he gained the logia powers of water and the ability to heal. And when he gets exhausted, there would be this warm current flowing through his body and he would feel fine. As for why Enel's lightning didn't affect him, maybe it was because of his water logia, he can control the sea's water to subdue devil fruit users, but his own body is made of pure water so electricity should just pass through it. But this sudden ability to gain wings doesn't really fit the counter ability. If it was a simple counter, then he should get the ability to control wind or something, not sprout wings. The only reason Lucas can think of is that he thought of having wings at that moment, so in the end, just what is his real ability? Even though Lucas didn't know the answer, he knew there was no time to be dwelling on such things. Lucas looked up in the sky and looked a bit lost. This is the Grand Line. There is no such thing as a sense of direction without a log pose. But, up should still be, up, right? Lucas gritted his teeth and flapped his wings, shooting him high up in the sky. His big wings are different from the small wings of the Skypea citizens and can actually be used to fly and support his body. Somehow, he can also control it perfectly as if it has been a part of his body his whole life. It truly felt weird for him, but Lucas shrugged the feeling off as he felt restless from worry. Luffy! Don't do anything stupid! As Lucas arrived above the clouds, he looked around but saw no sign of the Sky Island. Lucas began to panic. Damn it! Where is it? Where's the Sky Island? Lucas flew around as he searched for the Millennium Cumulonimbus cloud. However, after over an hour of searching, he was still unable to see a shadow of the Sky Island. Lucas clenched his fist hard then released it. He closed his eyes and breathed out. Calm down, there's no time to panic, I need to calm down. Lucas calmed his breathing in a few breaths and opened his eyes. He thought for a while then stretched his arms high up. Gritting his teeth as he focused, after a while, the rain began to pour from the sky. He closed his eyes again and this time, focused on using his observation hockey and integrated to the raindrops. The rain cloud continued to expand slowly, with each drop containing Lucas hockey. Such an application of hockey is probably a first in this world. In fact, even Lucas didn't think that it would work, but at this stage, he was truly grasping at straws. It was unknown if the water pouring from Lucas' face was the rain or his own sweat as he tried his hardest to maintain his concentration and focus for hours. Finally, just as he was about to collapse from the strain of expanding his powers too much, he felt it. One drop has reached the Sky Island. Lucas's eyes snapped open and his wings flapped in that direction at high speed. Skypea. What are you doing? Arrest that girl. Conies was driving a bull-themed waver as she dodged the attacks from the White Berets, the police force of Skypea. Fool! You can't get away. Arrest the criminal. The captain shouted at Conies, who was attempting to enter the island. Just a while ago, a worker had escaped from Enel and risked his life to pass on a message to her and her father who happened to be in Upper Yard, waiting for the Straw Hats. The worker said that Enel was planning on destroying the whole of Sky Island. However, Enel was watching them, so he sent another pillar of lighting at the worker along with Conies and her father. Thankfully, Coney's father reacted quickly and pushed Coney's away, thus saving her life. She didn't want her father and the worker's sacrifice to be in vain, which brought to this situation where she is trying to enter Skypea again despite being a fugitive. She needs to warn the others. Please move aside. Coney shouted, but it was too late. Her waver had hit the captain of the White Berets on his face. Captain! Wah! Since the waver is already out of her control, Conies jumped off but the waver still hit the captain again. Captain! It's the criminal! It's that blasphemous woman! 
The citizens saw Conies and started to shout at her, but Conies didn't care. Please, everyone, listen to me. Get out of here, criminal. Yeah. You'll only bring us rubles. Go away. Conies gritted her teeth and endured the insults. When suddenly, one of the white berets charged at her with a knife in an attempt to attack her. Conies moved quickly and pointed the bazooka on her back at him. Hold it right there. Seeing the bazooka pointed at him, the white beret paused in fright. This is a bazooka. I will fire if you get any closer. Conies was no longer fooling around. If it meant for the citizens to listen to her, she doesn't mind taking drastic measures. The citizens also didn't know that Conies had it in her to do such a thing and they all took a step back. Conies saw that everyone was finally quiet. Everyone, please go to Cloud's End. Escape to the Blue Sea. What trickery is this, little girl? The captain of the White Berets finally stood up. The citizens were also confused. What is she saying? Conies continued. God Enel is going to destroy this country. We will die if we stay here. Everyone was badly alarmed. This was some serious accusation. Ah! Oh, what nonsense! What are you trying to do? Go away! God Enel will never do such a thing. Suddenly, one of the kids threw a rock at Conies. At this moment, a shadow suddenly dove in from the sky and caught the rock before it hit Conies' face. The man stood in front of Conies as his huge wings expanded, seemingly shielding Conies from the citizens. W who are you? Me? It doesn't matter who I am, but I think you should listen to what this lady has to say, else, forget it all, I would personally destroy this country. Lucas crushed the rock with his hands as he glared at the others. He was really pissed. The citizens in white berets froze under his gaze. Conies didn't know who the man in front of her is, but she knew that he is at least on her side. She tossed her bazooka away and quietly faced the people. It's okay. As she threw her weapon. Arrest her. The captain shouted, but Lucas glared at him and was about to attack him when he felt someone touch his arm. Conies looked at him and shook her head. When Lucas saw that, he sighed and simply sent a deadly glare at the captain instead. Naturally, no one made a move on Conies anymore. It was unknown if they were truly intimidated by Lucas or the fact that his huge wings made them confused. There was no one in Sky Island with such huge wings. Still, Conies took this chance to speak. Enel is not the true god. What? When everyone heard her, forget trying to listen anymore, they all tried to leave the place. What has she done? Quick! Get away from her. The judgment is coming. Everyone ran away, thinking that Enel would send a pillar of lightning to kill Conies. They didn't want to be included. Lucas was about to make a move to stop them from leaving, but Conies stopped him again. Seeing her determined expression, Lucas sighed and simply crossed his arms. Conies closed her eyes and sat on the ground, waiting for everyone to come back. Sure enough, after a few minutes and seeing that Conies was not punished, everyone was confused. Actually, even Lucas wasn't sure if Emil would extend his mantra here at this moment, so with his recent advancement in the observation hockey, he made some sort of shield around them to prevent from others' own hockey. Lucas has no idea if it truly worked or not though, he just imagined an invisible dome around them made of his own hockey. Ever since he integrated observation hockey in the raindrops, he felt that there were numerous applications for this type of hockey and it seems to have a lot of subtypes but in the original manga, observation hockey wasn't fully explored. Sure, there are people like Katakuri who can see a few seconds into the future with this power, but there aren't too many applications showed other than that and sensing the surroundings. Lucas feels it is worth it to have gained observation hockey first so he can continue to explore its usages. As Lucas contemplated on such things, everyone slowly revealed themselves again. Huh? She didn't get punished? Why? She said such a blasphemous thing. Conies finally opened her eyes. I will say this even if it means losing my life, but the last words of the survivor of the gods' militia are, Skypea will be destroyed. 
he and my father were then killed by Enel. Everyone was shaken at the sudden revelation. The kid who threw a rock at Coney's earlier was confused. Wouldn't God help us? His mother didn't know what to say and could only tightly embrace her son. Coney's continued. There is no time. Everyone, please go to Cloud's End. Despite her urgings, the citizens of Skypea were still distressed. This was all too sudden for them. We've been in the sky all our lives, we don't know how to survive in Blue Sea. Are you saying you are going to sit here and die? But, maybe there will be a miracle. Maybe Skypea won't be destroyed. Maybe God will change his mind. Everyone was thinking of countless excuses as they didn't want to live in hardship in the Blue Sea. Conies was pissed and shouted at them. If there is one thing I know for certain, it is that Enel is hopelessly powerful and cruel. A miracle will never happen. As of now, this country does not have a god. This is not the time to be praying. If we survive, everything will be different. We must choose. Dead or alive, our lives depend on this very question. Conies shouted with all her breath. Do we, or do we not, give up on this country and run? Everyone fell silent. Suddenly, Lucas moved his hand and patted Coney's head. Confused, she looked back at the mysterious man. She doesn't know who he was but, when she looked at those huge wings that seemed to protect her from everything, she felt very safe. Lucas smiled at her. I understand that you don't have faith in Enel as your god, but that doesn't mean a miracle wouldn't happen. What, do you mean? Lucas just grinned at her. He he, even if he is God, I can still think of at least one person on this island that can defeat him. There is no need to evacuate, I will protect everyone. Lucas no longer mined them and flew high above the clouds. If he remembers correctly, the thing that will potentially destroy the Sky Island was a huge thunder cloud formed by Enel with the help of his ship, the Maxim. Thinking of this, if he can make a water shield around the city, it should be able to redirect the lightning currents away from the island. Well, he knows that Luffy will eventually stop Enel anyway, but just a precaution. Above the Sky Island, Lucas extended his hands and controlled the surrounding waters found in the clouds as he extracted them and formed a huge dome that surrounded the whole island. Coney's and the others saw the water dome and were surprised. Is this a miracle? He must be a god. The true god has come to save us. Who knows who started it, but soon everyone was shouting God. God! God, so much that it reverberated throughout the island. Enel naturally heard this as well with his mantra and his face went black as he saw the water dome above. Who dares to challenge God? Besides him, Zoro, Sanji, Robin, and Nami were all badly bruised. But, when they saw the water dome, they all broke into grins. He he, I knew that guy's not able to die. Heh, just who said that he will cut down God for killing him? Shut up curly brows. What did you say Mosshead? Despite them being bruised all over, Zoro and Sanji still tried to argue with each other. At the side, Nami's eyes revealed a tear as she smiled. This damn pervert. Fufu, he is quite something, isn't he? Robin chuckled and moved towards the unconscious Usopp, Chopper, and Gon Fall. The Shandian warrior, Wiper, also looked curiously at the water dome above and to the straw hat pirates who acted as if everything is fine now. Still, he refocused his sights on Enel who was gritting his teeth in frustration. At this moment, from the unconscious huge snake lying on the side, finally opened its mouth and revealed three figures. A strange spotted bird, a little girl, and a familiar man with a straw hat. I'm finally out. Chapter 17, Thunderstorm When Luffy originally found out what happened to Lucas, he was mad. Not just because of Lucas, even going merry was destroyed. He didn't wait any longer and simply went ahead and charged to Enel's place once they discovered that the upper yard was actually a piece of Jaya in the past and deduced where Enel may be based on the description in Mont Blanc Norland's logbook. In the skull's right eye, gold is seen. The Skypea map, combined with the Jaya map, had formed a skull. 
since this was the case, the supposed city of gold being found in the right eye of the skull should be where Enel is. This was their deduction since they thought that if they were God, they would naturally choose to have their palace in a city full of gold. But of course, this wasn't the entire truth. It was simply coincidence that Enel's palace was indeed at the top of that area where there was also a giant beanstalk that pierced the sky. During their travel to that place, Enel's militia has begun to fight them and they were all separated due to circumstances. In fact, Luffy was still eaten by a giant snake just like the original story along with the bird Pierre and the lowly Isa. Only, in this case, the last surviving fighters were Zoro, Sanji, Robin, Nami, Gonfall, and Wiper. Together with Enel, there were seven remaining fighters which were two more than his prediction. Naturally, Enel couldn't stand it so he tried to eliminate two more. After defeating Don Fall, Enel tried to make a move on Nami who appeared to be the weakest so as to settle his prediction of five remaining fighters. However, Zoro and the rest agreed that the one who needs to be removed was Enel instead. The remaining people tried to fight Enel while Nami hid behind the ruins and guarded the unconscious people. Wiper had used his reject dial once already on Enel and his body was having a hard time standing up. Zoro and the others also were in no shape to fight with their bruises and burns covering their bodies. It was at this moment when Lucas had created the water barrier and Luffy got out from the unconscious snake. Luffy looked up at the sky and his mouth curled to a big grin as he looked at Enel. Shi 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 shi. You're in for it now. Humph. What does it matter for one more of you? Those who oppose God will die. Enel was furious. But before he could attack, a figure dove in from the sky and hovered above them. You're no god, Enel. Lucas had moved here after comforting Konies and the other Skypea citizens. Though the way they were calling him was a bit unsettling for him. Even though he wanted to explain further and stop them from calling him god, he didn't want to waste too much time and simply flew here directly. Lucas! Hey! You have wings. That is so cool. Luffy's eyes were already glittering after seeing the huge wings behind him. Skypea people's wings were too small so it didn't have much impact for them, but Lucas' wings were about twice an arm's length. Even Lucas thinks that he looks handsome. At this moment, the author regretted giving this narcissistic bastard wings, but he can't undo it anymore since the chapter has been published. The author is also thinking of using Enel and kill this main character and end the story. But of course, this is only in his head, or is it? Back to the story, Lucas smiled wryly as he explained. Sorry for the worry guys, his lightning didn't really affect me but, that move of his is so damn big that it destroyed the area I was standing on so, I fell from the sky. You fell. Yeah, I have no idea why wings suddenly appeared on my back though but thankfully, it did. Otherwise, I would be lost in the Grand Line by now. Lucas laughed and waved his wings. His body is still that of a Water Lovia user, even with wings on his back, they are also a part of his body now. Naturally, they are made of water as well despite appearing like that of an angel's wings. When he waved his wings, feathers made from his water shot out and stuck to Zoro and the other injured people. The water enveloped them and slowly healed their wounds. Enel saw this as well and angrily charged at him. You think I'll let you? Gomu Gomu no, whip! Humph. You think you C-A-G-H? When he saw Luffy's feet extend and attempted to kick him, Enel snorted and chose to ignore it, believing that his leg would only pass through him. But, he doesn't know what rubber is. If he knew, then he would know, that electricity is useless against a rubber man. Enel's Logia Devil Fruit is powerful. Extremely powerful, alas, he had met Luffy, his ultimate counter. Even as he flew off and hit a wall in the ruins, Enel was still confused and refused to believe what just happened. Seeing this, Nami exclaimed, Of course! Luffy's made of rubber, which means Enel's lightning doesn't have any effect on him. Zoro shook his head and smiled helplessly. Heh, so much for a god, to be defeated by a rubber man. I kinda feel sorry for him now. 
Sanji also laughed and started to relax as he lit up a cigarette. Enel still couldn't believe it and shot numerous lightning attacks at Luffy, but Luffy just stood there and picked his nose. Enel's face was quite amusing to look at. His mouth was open wide and his eyes nearly popped out of their sockets. There's even snot coming out from his nose. Lucas sighed in regret that he couldn't take pictures of Enel's face at this moment. This was gold. Thankfully, Robin seemed to know what he was thinking and took a picture. Lucas gave her a thumbs up. Seeing as his enemies have started to wake up and also fully healed, in addition, there's that straw hat wearing boy who can't seem to be affected by his lightning, Enel gritted his teeth and chose to retreat. His body changed into lightning and sped away. Hey! We're not finished here. Luffy shouted, but Enel was too fast in his lightning form so he could stop him in time. Lucas patted his shoulder. It's all right, Luffy. I think I know where he's going. Then let's go. Before that, Lucas looked over to Wiper. I know this is a cruel thing to say, but you are no match for Enel. It's best you stay here and protect your people. Wiper gritted his teeth and clenched his fists. He knew that Lucas was right. Even with the sea stone, he was still not able to defeat Enel. Earlier, he had already used the reject dial on Enel, but Enel could even restart his own heart with his electricity. Against such a person, he was unable to fight at all. Lucas saw him fall silent and sighed. He didn't want to say such a mean thing, but it would be bad for him to keep on following as it would cost him his life and Lucas can't guarantee he can keep an eye on him the whole time. Lucas is indeed unable to be affected with Enel's lightning, but he still can't touch Enel like Luffy. The best he can do is assist Luffy or create an opening for him. After a while, Wiper sighed and tossed his sea stone infused skate waver. Go, this should still be of use to you. You better send that god to hell. Un, lead it to us. Lucas nodded. Then looked at the sea stone skate waver. He thought for a while then decided to crush it into pieces. Zoro, can I borrow that iron cloud sword for a moment? Here, it's yours anyway. Zoro tossed the iron cloud sword. When Lucas caught it, he poured apart some part of the sea stone pieces on it and manipulated the sword in such a way that it holds the pieces on the outer edge of the sword. After doing so, he tossed it back to Zoro. Here, with this, you should be able to hit Enel. Ha, yeah, and here I was wondering how I could cut down a god. Thanks. Next, Lucas embedded the remaining sea stone pieces on the shoe part of the skate waver then gave it to Sanji. Wear this for now. Thanks. Now I can kick a god's butt. Luffy grinned and held onto his straw hat as he looked to the direction Enel had left. Mateys! Let's go defeat God. Lucas smiled wryly at these three who were so eager to take on the supposed God. He turned around and was about to grab Luffy and the rest to fly when someone held his arm. Turning around, he saw Nami glaring at him. You better come back. I will. At the side, Robin also looked at him and nodded in encouragement. Take care. Shishishi. Let's go. Lucas grinned as well and held Luffy from behind. His wings stretched wide and Luffy's eyes shone again. So cool! Haha, -ha, let's go! Luffy's arms stretched as he held Zoro and Sanji. Together, the four of them flew into the air as the wing brushed past them. Such a flight was a new experience to Luffy and the rest even though they technically flew their ship to the sky before. Flying with wings is still awesome. Not like the wings was his, but it still felt great. They laughed as they flew. Suddenly, they saw what seems to be a ship, flying in the skies as well. This is, Enel's ship, the Maxim. That's where Enel is. Whoa! That ship is flying. Get ready! We'll give God a proper greeting. Luffy laughed as he handed Zoro over to his left arm along with Sanji, making the two fight and bicker again. He didn't mind the two as he stretched his free right arm as it twisted to the back while Lucas carried them to Enel in high speed. Gomu Gomu no. Boost. Both gritted their teeth as they both neared Enel. 
Anil grimaced when he saw the two of them and with his mantra, he knew what would happen next. Quickly turning to lightning, Anil blended with the huge gold face behind him. Just in time too. Lucas and Luffy's attack was about to hit him. Wing rifle. Boom! Despite missing Anil, the two of them managed to destroy the giant golden face on the ship, causing gold debris to start falling from the sky. Lucas can just imagine the look in Nami's face once she sees this. Thankfully, she wasn't here. The name of the attack was something the two came up with abruptly. Though Lucas already knew that Luffy was preparing his Gomu Gomu no Bazooka attack, he thought that since he's assisting him, he should also combine his own attack name with Luffy. Boost Wing A simple charge attack using the wind from his wing propelling him and delivering a heavy blow to the enemy. The high-speed charge coupled by the rubber's own tension, the result was quite devastating. Enel reappeared again. He looked at the remains of the gold statue that he made and his face paled. If that had hit him instead. Enel looked at the four who landed on his ship with a grim face. Who the hell are you? I'm Luffy. I'm gonna be the Pirate King. Pirate King? Humph. It doesn't matter if your attacks can hurt me or not, I'll show you that a god is still above that of a king. Enel's body turned into lightning as he traveled towards Luffy. When he reappeared, his staff was about to hit Luffy. If Luffy had been alone, that attack would indeed hit, but it wasn't just Luffy that's here. Zoro and Sanji were prepared and sent a sword and kick towards Enel just before he could hit Luffy. With Enel's mantra, he was able to notice them earlier but didn't mind since to him, only Luffy and Lucas was a threat. What he didn't know was that both of them now had sea stones on their sword and feet. GUH dash. When their attacks hit, Enel was flown back while spurting blood from his mouth. Luffy grinned. You may be a god, but you're all alone. As if on cue, Lucas appeared from behind Enel and swung his wings, releasing about a hundred of high pressured water feathers at Enel. Piercing feathers. Enel gritted his teeth as he turned around and brought his arms forward in an attempt to block. Just as he was thinking that the water feathers would simply pass through his body as it is not made of sea stone or sea water, he missed to notice another attack was approaching him from behind. Gomu Gomu no. Bazooka. Godash. Luffy's attack forced him to solidify and the incoming water feathers was already nearing his body. At this moment, in Enel's vision, Time seemed to slow down as he stared at the hundreds of high-pressured water feathers about to hit him. It's coming. Must move. Nuu. Enel screamed as he felt as if hundreds of arrows had pierced his body. When the attack stopped, Enel fell down on his knees, his whole body was bloodied. Luffy, Lucas, Zoro, and Sanji all looked at him calmly without any trace of pity. Enel gasped for breath difficulty. A. Arg, damn you. I was, so close, my plans would have worked flawlessly if it wasn't for you lot. Everyone would fear me, worship me. Punks like you, are no match for me. Enel stood up, a huge black cloud could be seen from above him. I am the Almighty God. Lucas looked up at the black cloud and started to hover. Look carefully, pirates of the blue seas. This island is doomed, nothing can save it now. Shut up. Luffy was already fed up with Enel's bullshit and charged towards him. Luffy, wait. Lucas tried to stop him, but Luffy was already in front of Enel. Enel saw this coming, he touched the golden face statue from behind and injected his lightning on it. Thunder alchemy. The gold seemed to have melted in his hands, which he was able to freely manipulate to any shape. When Luffy's fist neared him, Enel manipulated the gold to surround his fist, creating a huge and heavy golden orb attached to his arm. Ah! Oh. Hot! Luffy! Luffy's face paled from the hotness of the gold that touched his skin. Yah! Ha ha! Ha ha! Ah! Oh. I can't pull it out! Enel laughed while panting. Ha ha! Rubber man of the blue sea, I have no desire to fight you. Let me go, you ass! You are dismissed! Enel ignored him and simply kicked the golden orb away from the ship. 
naturally, with how heavy it was, Luffy was dragged down. Zoro and Sanji acted quickly and attempted to catch Luffy. GGGHHH dash. With you out of the way, the world is mine, once again. There will be no one to stop me. There is still me. Lucas took the Iron Cloud Sword from Zoro and flew towards Enel. You! Enel glared at Lucas. He manipulated his staff to turn into a trident and attacked. The Iron Cloud Sword and the Golden Trident clashed. Suddenly, Lucas heard Luffy and the others screamed as they fell from the sky. Wawa! Luffy! Zoro! Sanji! Where are you looking at? Damn it! Lucas hesitated for a moment before deciding to retreat and catch Luffy and the others instead. As Lucas grabbed the three, he flapped his wings as hard as he could but the golden orb was too heavy. Without much of a choice, Lucas can only soften their landing and redirect them towards the giant beanstalk where Enel is originally headed to look for the golden bell above it. The four crashed on the ground with a loud boom. Soon, Nami, Robin, and the others ran towards them. Seeing the huge golden orb, Nami's eyes turned to bellies once again. Gold! Luffy! Are you guys all right? We're fine. I'll head back up there. You guys find a way to get Luffy's hand out of that gold orb. Lucas sighed and flew back up without delay. By the time Luffy also got up, Lucas was already high up in the sky. He looked up, then looked at his arm, then to the giant beanstalk. There's no time to get this thing out of my arm. I'm going! Luffy didn't care about the heavy weight on his arm as he began to run up the beanstalk while dragging the huge gold orb behind him. Nami snapped out of it and pulled her waiver. I'll catch up to Luffy with the waiver, you all should go back to the city. She didn't wait for their response and drove the waiver up the beanstalk. Meanwhile, on board the Maxim, Enel looked up at the dark clouds and grinned. He started to gather up his electricity and shot towards the sky. Then, huge lightning started to rain down on the island. This is it, the party, has officially started. Thunderstorm That's the end of this tale for now. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in part 2. Peace.